Until the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso And I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show You beautiful souls, up and Adam, get out of bed. No, you don't have to get out of bed. You can stay in bed and watch the whole show from there. It's up to you. It's a brand new day. Imagine the possibilities, what we can do with our lives with this whole day ahead of us. Hopefully, we will inspire you, inform you, and get you uh, being a little bit more creative with your life in the kitchen, at home, at work. You name it. We've got inspiration aplenty this morning, and we're going to have a lot of fun. My name is Graham Richards. Welcome from myself and the rest of the team. So today, we're going to be uh, crossing live from Durban as well. Kutle is out on the range. She's going to help us kickstart this morning in style with um, a little um this morning. We've got uh, uh, an incredible young artist who's making waves. Tipsy is going to be helping us really jumpstart our Tuesday morning. So you want to stick around for that. Afrotainment at its best. There you can see on screen right now. It's going to be a lot of fun today. Um, so expect a bit of a vibe, I think, and a little bit of a, a first-hand glimpse at where and how the magic comes together. We absolutely love that. And of course, it's a vegan-inspired Tuesday morning as well. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, GJ Vlidomog reporting live for duty on this Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to all of you. It is the 25th of August, believe it or not. And yes, like G said, we are speaking all things veganism, uh, as well as Jason McNamara is in studio to show us how he's been uh, living and leading a vegan lifestyle. So lots of tips coming your way. But we're actually asking you on our social media platforms, are you vegan? What are some of your favorite vegan uh, recipes and maybe just inspirations? I have to be very honest with you guys. Last week was the first time when Grant Hines actually made that vegan nachos and it changed my entire life. It was so good. So I'm so excited to see what Jason McNamara is cooking up for us in the kitchen today. But of course, connect with us uh, throughout the show. We love connecting with you. Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. It's going to be an amazing show. We're also talking about leukemia and bone marrow transplant. So get in with us, connect with us. But right now it's time to get on with the order of the day and find out what's happening in the news headlines with Kat. Just gone two minutes past six o'clock. Here's a look at the news headlines this morning. A very good morning to you. On the national news front, Gauteng has received its first batch of 1,000 ventilators from the Solidarity Fund. Acting Health MEC Jacob Mamabola said the ventilators were inexpensive and had other useful patient indicators and were manufactured locally. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Zulim Kiza said 1,677 new corona cases uh, had been recorded in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 611. 11,450. The death toll now stands at 13,159. Mkhize attributed the higher recovery rate at 83% to the work of healthcare workers. Now, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, Tabo Makhoba, yesterday said in his online weekday uh, reflections, it amounts to an act of genocide that politicians make money out of a pandemic such as that of the coronavirus. This comes amid growing outrage in South Africa at alleged ramp rampant corruption, especially linked to PPE tenders. Makhoba says the Anglican Church will join the South African Council of Churches anti-corruption campaign, which will start at the end of this month. On the international news front, the renowned Charite Hospital in Berlin treating leading Russian op uh, opposition figure Alexei Navalny said yesterday that test results indicated he had been poisoned by a nerve agent uh, contradicting the findings of Russian doctors. The 44-year-old Kremlin critic and anti-corruption campaigner was brought to the German capital on Saturday after falling ill on an in uh, internal flight in Russia on Thursday. His supporters believe he was poisoned by something in his tea at the airport before he took off. He's in intensive care and is still in, in an artificial coma. His prognosis remains unclear. Now, Sudan has surprised its international customers by banning the export of raw peanuts. The country is one of the world's leading peanut producers, but has decided it wants to process raw nuts within the country and export what it claims will be more profitable secondary products. The two main customers for, for peanuts from Sudan are China and Indonesia. Sudan produced 1.5 million tons in 2019, worth 205 million US dollars, up from 59 U uh, million US dollars earned in 2018. Peanuts are Sudan's first largest international earner after gold, oil, livestock and sesame. 
and now all about a much needed moment of pure joy for the world. A big congratulations and messages of goodwill from across the world have been streaming in for Mei Xiang, the 22 year old female giant panda at the National Zoo in Washington DC, which gave birth to a cub on Friday night, the first one born there in five years. Now, Mei Xiang is also the oldest giant panda ever to give birth in the United States. Steve Monfort, director of the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute, said that with the birth of this precious cub, they are thrilled to offer the world a much needed moment of pure joy as giant pandas are an international symbol of endangered wildlife and hope. He said they knew because Mei Xiang was of advanced maternal age, chances of her having a cub were slim. However, we wanted to give her one more opportunity to contribute to her, spe to her species survival, he said. Now, Mei Xiang is reported to be an attentive and caring mother, keeping the wee one tucked in between her arms. And now news of the much-anticipated Miss South Africa pageant. Cape Town is set to play host to the Miss South Africa finale for the first time in the history of the pageant. Miss South Africa 2020 will be crowned at a spectacular and entertainment-packed event, which takes place on Saturday, October the 24th, starting at 5 p.m. Said Cape Town Executive Mayor Dan Plato, the city of Cape Town is pleased to partner with the Miss South Africa organization to bring the pageant to our city. This is an iconic South African event, which has has over the years made the dreams of many young women a reality and elevated their status as change makers in society. We believe that it will provide hope and shine a light on our country's beauty and beauty and female leaders. South Africa is now regarded as one of the leading pageant countries in the world, with Rolene Strauss being crowned voted Miss World in 2014. Lisa Laurie in 2015 was Miss World Top 10 and Continental Queen of Africa. Demi Lienel Peters was Miss Universe in 2017. Adele Van Heerden in 2017 also was in the Miss World Top 10. Tamron Green was 2018's Miss Universe First Princess. And of course, Zosie Bini Tunzi, our 2019 and reigning Miss Universe. Well, on that very celebratory note, let's take a quick look at what's happening in the world of sports. Here's Graham. <music> Thanks so much, Kat, and a very good morning and welcome once again from the sports team. Yeah, let's kick it off with our Monday night football and we saw reigning uh, Premier Soccer League champions Mamelodi Sundowns finally take the gap and close in on log leaders Kaiser Chiefs after their 1-0 victory over Golden Arrows. So the Brazilians are now only three points adrift of the Amakosi. Now the results from yesterday, it was yet another draw for Bidvest Wirtz who drew 0-0 against Maritzburg United and then Amazulu FC and Bloom Celtic, they also drew two apiece. There'll be just one PSL fixture this evening as Black Leopard face off against their northern rival Supersport United at 6 p.m. And on to cricket, bad light and rain yet again played a hand forcing an early stumps on the fourth day of the third test between England and Pakistan that at the Rose Bowl in Southampton yesterday. Visitors trailing England by 210 runs with eight wickets in hand. Day ending with Pakistan on 100 for two with Azhar Ali and on 29 and Babar Azam on four. Um, talking about a massive milestone, England's James Anderson sits on 599 wickets. 38-year-old is just one shy of becoming only the fourth bowler in history to reach this milestone. The test between England and Pakistan will continue from 12 p.m. this afternoon, South African time. And on to tennis, finally, the 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams overcame Dutch qualifier Atarank Sarus 7-6, 3-6, to advance to the Western and Southern Open round of 16. Third seeded Williams beat her opponent at a time of 2 hours and 49 minutes on the grandstand court at the National Tennis Centre in New York. Next, she will be up against the 13th seed, Maria Sakari of Greece. More on all of those stories as we progress right now. Let's take our first look at the weather. <coughs> Thank you so much, G. Let's get you ready for this Tuesday morning. But first, we've asked you to at home to send us your sunrise photos so we know what the view looks like in your part of the country. Now, Yashmita Singh has sent through. Check out this blue and pink skyline from Durban, which is where Kuthle is live reporting from this morning. Now, South Africa's playground can expect a minimum of 14, reaching a warm 26. It's going to be a beautiful day out there in Durban. Another one coming through from Geraldine Flatwell, who posted this 
gorgeous view of the beachfront in Fishhook. I would certainly frame that picture. Now, Fishhook can expect cloudy and chilly temperatures reaching a maximum of 15 degrees. Now, you too can contribute to our weather report. All you have to do is post your sunrise selfies on Expresso's Facebook page. We absolutely love seeing them. Now, officials in Louisiana and Texas yesterday urged residents to prepare for a rare one-two punch from Tropical Storm Marco and Hurricane Laura, which are expected to pound the state this week within about 48 hours of each, uh, um, of each other. Meteorologists say it's extremely rare for the Gulf of Mexico to have a hurricane and a tropical storm at the same time. Now, the last time this happened was in 1959. Laura has already caused the deaths of at least nine people in the Caribbean and is expected to become a Category 3 hurricane with whipping winds of at least 180 kilometers per uh, hour before it makes landfall. Uh, now, Laura is also expected to dump torrential rain from Louisiana all the way to Florida. Right now, bringing it back home, here's a look at the temperatures for the day. Starting off with Polokwane, your low is 6, peaking at 26 degrees. Umbombela ranges from 14 to 32. It's going to be a beautiful day for you, Umbombela. Pretoria coming through with a minimum temperature of 8 and a maximum of 25. Johannesburg, 7, 23. Mahi King, 11, 29. For you, Clarkstorp, your minimum temperature is 9, peaking at 29. Nine degrees. Now we go to Kimberley with a minimum of nine, peaking at 30. Bloemfontein, 325. Richards Bay, ranging from 20 to 29. And if you do find yourself in Peter Madsburg today, 11 is your low, with 29 being your high. South Africa's playground at Durban, where Kuthle will be reporting live from today, ranges from 14 to 26 degrees. Umtata, 832. East London coming through with a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 21. Craddock 530. The friendly city of Port Elizabeth ranges of 13 to 17 degrees. George coming through with 11 to 21. The mother city Cape Town ranging from 11 to 19 with the 52% chance of rain today. So you might want to get that coat handy and ready. Wooster with a low of 8 and a high of 19. Sutherland, my friends, coming through with minus 5 today, peaking at only 19. So again, grab that umbrellas and that coat. And then Uppington with a low of 10, peaking at 31 degrees. But of course, whatever the weather, wherever you find yourself on this beautiful Tuesday, make sure that you make it count. We certainly will. Thank you very much for that weather report. Uh, looking all things kind of good, if you will. Bit uh -huh. chills in Cape Town, but uh, Durban's looking very, it's very nice this sunrise, morning. Man. So, yeah, looking forward to crossing to Kutli. Of course, it's going to be with up and coming uh, superstar, I think, in the making, Tipsy. Mm -hmm. Not too familiar with her music, mm -hmm. but um, I've been told that she is making waves. And we will <laughs> get a, a fine introduction this morning, I think. Certainly a great place to catch all the waves, mm -hmm. Durban uh -huh. is, as we've now opened up uh, into provincial borders for travel oh, all around, though safely we still do it. Um, it is going to be a wonderful morning right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show as we cross over live to Kutle in Durban. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. It's my feel good breakfast show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. <laughs> Oh yeah, feel it in your bones, it could be your birthday. I hope it is your birthday today and you're feeling extra special. Welcome back, you're live with Expresso as we get into our birthday wishes and hopefully someone loves you enough to have sent through a beautiful wish. But let's find out who you share your birthday with and this is a dynamic young woman, South African actress, come stunt woman, come kickboxer, Olivia Jackson turns 37 years young today. She's known for her work on Mad Max Fury Road, awesome, Guardians of the Galaxy, she's got some moxie. Um, she she was um, shooting a high-speed motorcycle chase on Resident Evil, the final chapter, when she crashed into a metal camera arm and her left arm had to actually be amputated as a result because the damage was so extensive. Horrific story. And this year, she finally won the legal case against the film company. So happy birthday to a warrior. Go and check her out on Instagram. She is fierce, man. Oh, that's fierce. so amazing. It's so inspiring for her to like do all of that. It's but of course, fun, yeah. you guys at home as well would like to celebrate you this morning and this one is for Lauren we're wishing our amazing daughter Lauren a very happy 17th birthday may all your dreams and wishes come true enjoy your special day sweetheart and remember our favorite quote do you be your own kind of beautiful a lot of love from your mom Vani dad Peter and the Pillay family and we actually have Lauren on the line right now good morning Lauren good morning how good. are you I'm good how are you we, we are good. It's not our birthday. It's your birthday. So hopefully you're feeling really special. I, I know birthdays during lockdown are a little bit crazy. Have you got anything special planned? Are you going to try and kind of put together a bit of a get together or a party uh, over the weekend or something like that? How are you going to celebrate your birthday? Well, actually I have two today, but my parents have set up a little impromptu this morning. So that was fun. That is so sweet that they're doing all that for you and also that they sent you such a sweet message. Do you want to say anything to them? Maybe a big thank you to mommy and daddy and all of them for sending you such an awesome message on your birthday. Yes, thank you to my mom and dad for always being with me and loving and supporting me. You sound like a wonderful young lady. Happy 17th birthday. I hope it's a really special day. I hope you get showered with gifts and loads of love and you feel unbelievably special. But uh, the Expresso family, your extended family, are sending you loads of love as well. Go and have a fantastic day, Lauren. Thank you. Oh, sweet thing. Happy birthday to Lauren. Let's get through some of the other birthdays that are being celebrated today. Busa Siwe, uh, happiest birthday to you, Busa Siwe. I hope you get to do something fun to celebrate. May God bless you more with all that you wish and pray for. And that's coming to you from your entire family. Mvoyisi, this year has been crazy and hectic, oh, hasn't it? Fortunately, you've kept your cool and stuck by the rules and you are celebrating your special day. Happy birthday to you, Tabist. May 2021 bring you bigger and better things and that's coming to you from your friends in Chrisani. Happy birthday, bro. And then a happy 20th birthday to Chelsea Jade. Many blessings on your special day. May you always remain the caring, kind-hearted and resilient person that you are. Enjoy your day and this is love from your dad, your mom and Caleb. And then another one, I wish the love of my life, my best friend, partner Aww. in crime, my beautiful sister, Sintlantla Nsindane, a happy 17th birthday. I love you so much, my soon-to-be reality TV star. Okay, let us in on that. Right, right. Don't change anything about you. Keep on being the blessing that you are in the fam. And this is from Tabisa. I wonder if it's out to be so. I wonder. I wonder. Oh, man, I want to find out. I want to know what she's going to star. And then Pila Sande is also celebrating a birthday. Happy 11th birthday to Pila Sande. May God bless you with many more happy and good life. We love you. And that's from Londeca. And then Rihanna is also celebrating a birthday. A blessed birthday to our princess, Rihanna David. So always keep your beautiful smile shining and know that we love you so much. That's coming to you from your mother, Raisa, Grandma, Chidi, Chazel, Ayan, and Uncle Tuli, the whole family, basically, and from your Expresso family as well. Everybody, but of course, if it is your birthday today, happy birthday, but don't forget to send us your birthday videos to 
one or better yet your birthdays uh, emails to birthdays at cordova.tv please spoil your loved ones on their birthday with breakfast in bed maybe and maybe this next recipe is one worth celebrating uh, you know what I feel like I need some waffles made for me so I'm going to ask Kat if he'll make me a few waffles this morning very well <laughs> Clover's range of margarines and spreads classic spread Mama Bake Margie, how do you know what we like? I know someone who knows. Spread the Margie love. With love by Clover. Well, of course, sir, waffles you want, waffles you shall get. I think Thank we all you. have Thank some you. kind of love affair with waffles, don't um, we? It's one of my craving foods. Yeah. You know, you like you get those every once in a while. Like, sweet oh, or savory? I need it. Uh, sweet. Yeah? They, yeah, sweet. Well, the sweet. world over, they make them as, as they like them. Mm. And today we're showing you a healthier version mm. uh, with our Clover Classic Banana and Oat Waffles, a recipe that you can enjoy guilt-free as a treat. Yeah. Uh, actually, very, very easy. You can really? find it on expressoshow.com. And, of course, our Clover Classic here, that's our secret ingredient that we're using here, a source of 10 vitamins. You're gonna start off nice with done. that. Um, get about two tablespoons thereof. As you Just can see, nicely together, and together nicely temperature and already. Lovely golden. We get that melted yeah. here into our pan. And um, so yeah, that's gonna form the basis, give you that extra lovely creamy uh, taste in your waffles. Cause you want them to be liquor. You want them to be liquor. And All right. Yeah, I reckon also give it a nice kind of like that, that caramelization, that dark. Exactly more, brown. exactly more. I'm gonna put these Toastiness. right here so while our butter does its thing. And then very, very basic, very cool. Uh, I mean, the, the recipe is self-explanatory. Uh, it is a banana and oat. So we're gonna go with the <laughs> <laughs> two eggs into our blender. I'm gonna add just a touch of liquid in milk. I'm going to leave some just in case we need a bit more. As you know, of course, the oat is going to... We'll see where are we are. Uh, the oat is going to soak up the liquid quite a lot. Uh, so while it does that, I'll add the oats. Yeah, here's the taste. Here we go. Nice. This is like just like... Because I, I love oats in general. Remember that, that time yeah. when we were doing um, boxing training for oh, the charity I still go match? back to that. Bruce. Right? I still go back to the... Oats was everything. Oats with peanut butter. Yeah. Boom. I now so, do like oats with peanut with a, a protein shake. Yeah. Mixed so the more it. ways I can find to integrate oats, the better. I, I just love it in everything. I'm going to let that melt down a little no, but bit. Also if, you, if you're trying to lessen kind of your sugars, your, your refined sugars, if you're trying to lessen your maybe your wheats and those kind of grains, I mean, this is a lovely alternative. Absolutely. So we've got some honey going in there. Not that you need any extra sweetness. Yeah. No, the banana will take care of it. But I find like banana, especially in smoothies and stuff, has a very subtle kind of sweetness. Mm. So if you just want to spike it up a little but bit. Also hon honey and banana complement each other in their yeah. flavor profile as well. So not just about the sweetness, but it's a well-rounded flavor. Exactly. But it's done. We've got a pinch of salt that's going to go along with that. Here we go. All about the balance. Vanilla. Oh. Yeah. So you're gonna get a lovely, nice. lovely little taste in. Baking uh, powder as our rising agent. Okay. And just uh, in time for the party, and bada I've, bing. I've, bada boom. I've, I've also learned that the baking powder um, or bicarb, it also lends itself to the browning effect. So if you want to kind of crisp up your, your bakes, that uh, often does help with that, that, I don't know what the right term is, if it's caramelization, but that, that creating that beautiful crispy yes. outer layer. If you really want with a waffle, you want it must be nice and crispy and crunchy, but still kind of moist and have a good density on the inside. Alrighty, so cool. that's done. All our ingredients are in. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, simple. Nice and easy. Just gonna blend it up, blitz it up. So this is how you're gonna get the batter going. Oh, that's looking so good. Wow. That's looking so good right now. And uh, I'm gonna not let every single piece of... Well, this is it's already there anyway. So. Oh, no, that's... Okay, that's about done. That's that really doesn't done. take too much. So you're, you're essentially creating your own grain by the, through the blending process. There you go. And then, of course, if you, ha if you don't have a, a fancy waffle iron like we have here, then you can just use a pan and make flat Smash some flat tracks, yeah. yeah how about that? So, these will go in for about seven minutes. Um, so you're going to fill it up to about halfway because, of course, with the baking powder as the rising agent, uh, okay. that's also going to help it to rise a little bit. So you don't want to so overcrowd hack, yeah. your um, waffle iron. So just press it down. I wonder if that's enough. Do we need more? Give it How's a that? drop more. Maybe just a, a drop, just a, just a drop, drop more. more. Just 
just in case. If a little bit spills over, they're not all right. Ah, it's okay. On each side. That smells good. <laughs> I didn't expect it to smell it so good. It actually smells bad. like a bre breakfast smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, seven minutes, they'll be done looking something as beautiful as that. And then the decorating starts. So yeah, sir, man. I've I given you the ingredients to decorate. You can I decide how you want to put it together. beautiful little Cornell here of of ice cream, which is correct. Is that what it's called? It's called a Quinell. A Quinell. A Quinell, yeah. yeah. I, knew, I knew a young lady named Quinell once. Quinell. <laughs> Quinell. I wonder whether her parents thought of her as a... As a beautifully Quinell crafted... Of, you know, Quinell of ice cream. I'll, oh, I'll oh, never oh. look at an ice cream serving the same ever again. It's, I mean, I didn't do that Quinell of ice cream. I didn't Quinell it, okay? <laughs> so this is tougher than it looks. Um, it's something quite... There you go. There we go. Got a bit of pressure. It's, oh, come on. <laughs> just one <laughs> more. Gonna, just I'm one more. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, there we good. go. But and that, you got some extra honey. That looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is that quenelle that just will not. I know. Someone made our quenelle too perfectly. That's beautiful. And I'm going to round it off with a little bit of honey, huh? just a drizzle. Drizzle of honey. Because for me, the best part about a waffle is when you get a little bit of, of honey or syrup collecting in the little grooves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. How does that look? That's, that's the ultimate that's sign of a well-made waffle. Right? Wow. Well, well yeah. crafted, well, well decorated. Done, Remember, you can find the, really the uh, recipe really on our website, expressoshow.com, mm, mm, mm. our Clover Classic Banana and Oat Waffles. Great for breakfast, great as a treat. Try it out at home in case you miss all of these very easy steps. Take a quick look at this. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, look at that. That's good. Huh? Classic spread. Mama Bake. Margie, how do you know what we like? I know someone who knows. Spread the Margie love. With love, by Clover.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, you got it right. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thank you for staying tuned in to the magic. And of course, when you're talking about yoga, it's described as a form of physical exercise, breathing and meditation with several health benefits, which are great for the mind, the body, and of course, the soul. And now with the Vita Thion Unleash Your Beast Mode series, we are taking a look at different forms of exercise, which can do many, many different things. And you can do it in the comfort of your own home to not only keep you looking good, but also boosting those energy levels to keep you going right right throughout the day. And one such exercise is the practice of yoga. Now we're chatting to Fulvio Grandin, the director and head teacher at Yoga Zone to teach us a little bit more about the practice of yoga. Fulvio, how are you doing this morning? I'm here, thank you very much. Good to be with you on your show. Thanks for the invitation and absolutely here on this beautiful day. Uh, it is indeed, we are blessed. And now before we get into the magic, of course, I've got to say thank you again uh, for sharing your studio with us. Now, what exactly is the act of yoga? I'm pretty sure it's not just a, a form of exercise, but it's, it's a little bit more than that, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I mean, most people think of yoga as you get onto a yoga mat and you do a bunch of kind of beneficial exercises in a sequence. Um, and yoga is a lot more than that. But just really to simplify it is that if you think of yoga in terms of its original kind of mindset or intention is to harmonize. Um, it's bringing things together. So the three main components that we have in our experience are our body, our mind, and our spirit. They're connecting through us all the time in various ways. And we express them in exercises or in thinking or in the way that we behave. So essentially yoga is it, I, I consider it as having three major components in terms of its practice. So it is a practice, which means you repeat it and you continue and you learn it and you grow slowly as you go along. And the components are, it has a component of breathing, which is very important, uh, that influences the body in a way that it can then access um, the yoga postures and the yoga exercises, which are really about the body the muscles, the connective tissue, the organs, the kind of the blood and the flow. And then there's a mental component of the mind. And mind and soul or spirit, if you like, shouldn't really be separated. Our awareness of ourselves is that we know there's a, there's a, a cosmic or a universal connection to all life force that we all, in whichever philosophy you come from, we all come from the same kind of makeup. In the same way, we're made of the same atoms. We have life force, whether it's expressed in a plant or a person. or And so yoga is about harmonizing these in the human experience. Beautiful description there. You make me want to just get down and get my yoga on. But uh, speaking more about the benefits of yoga, you mentioned how it harmonizes the mind, the body, and the, the soul, as you uh, discussed. But is it something that, well, for me, I always relate yoga to a very peaceful and calming experience. But is it something that can also help boost our energy? Look, I think that, that yoga, um, it, without it sounding something which is, which is kind of contradictory, but yoga is both relaxing and energizing. So energizing doesn't mean that we get hyper excited and then we can bounce off the walls and that, you know, we've got so much energy that we can't sleep. Or Energized means that we are focused, we are clear, we can activate our energy and our vitality and our creativity whenever we choose to and to the extent that we choose to. Um, so we have that energizing kind of vitality and relaxation means it doesn't mean lying on a couch flicking through the channels of the TV. Um, that is relaxing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but relaxation means that we are in, a, in an intrinsic state of just calm awareness that agitation affects us less. We get less agitated, that we're less fearful about the changes and the challenges. And this is something which I think most of the world over the last many months has really come to terms with is that you can choose to be agitated, fearful about a situation that is outside of your control, classically, or you can choose to just a certain amount of acceptance and then allow our mindfulness and our presence to kind of manifest the options and the solutions and, and the way we can move through those challenges. So in terms of that, I think that yoga is both relaxing because it focuses us, keeps us calm and centered, and energizing because it clarifies and clears us to be more better selves. Ah, speaking the magical words there. I'm just getting so educated and getting so excited at the same time. Now, you speak of all these benefits. Is it something that all ages can actually do with? Can uh, youngsters start it? Can we be in our 60s and still doing yoga? 
You know, the, the one universal thing about, about all humans is that we are all absolutely unique. Each and every one of us is completely different. Different right now, different in our history, and different in our future. Never in the past, nor in the present, nor in the future, will there be anybody like me right now with my body, my mind, my setup. Whether I'm five years old or whether I'm 85 years old, that uniqueness is the same. So yoga is really accessible to everybody. Um, whether you have much more mobility or less mobility, whether your body shape is a one form or another, um, whether you're going through certain challenges emotionally, physically, or mentally or not, it really doesn't matter because the practice of yoga postures is that we invite them into the body. We don't impose them. As soon as you try and impose something, you know, it's, it's going to meet its challenges. So in that invitation means that we can each one of us express and practice yoga in whichever format is the best and most suitable for us right at the time, our bodies, our minds, our situation. So absolutely, it's available to everyone. Oh, well, there you have it. Everybody that's watching, you have no excuse. You've got to get involved in this. And if you want to do a little bit more, tune in after the break where we find our Zen and the master is going to be taking us through the art of yoga. Well, Jamie Lee, you seem to have found yours in. Did I see you doing some yoga yesterday? Was it not yes, particularly it was like yoga? A... with stretchy poses and Absolutely, that kind of thing? Absolutely, yes. Very, very cool. Yeah, well, we're all about that on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, helping you to stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And whether it's the sustainability of uh, the clothing we wear and how we reuse and recycle or how we eat how, and, and what we eat, making conscious decisions will go a long way in ensuring the longevity of ourselves. And of course, our planet as well. Absolutely. Now, being mindful, being thoughtful, and being kind are all mantras which we, you know, can adopt to lead healthier lifestyles overall, but especially when it comes to our diet, you know, uh, which Chef Jay McNamara of the Kind Kitchen in Cape Town knows all too well. Take a look at this. I've been asked this question so many times. Why vegan? And I remember the moment quite clearly, the moment that I decided to stop eating animals. I was watching the documentary film called Earthlings. And at the time of watching the film, I hadn't eaten beef, lamb and pork for many years as I didn't feel the need and part of me had already begun to sympathize with these sentient beings. I was so disconnected from the food I ate and it was in that moment that I decided to change to a vegan lifestyle by learning how to cook vegan and change my eating habits through a yogic way of life. Being an avid Star Wars fan, the concept of the light side and dark side resonated with me and was easily translated into this road of veganism that I now found myself on. So what led me to becoming a chef or wanting to become a chef was basically a yogic way of life. A yogic way of living shows to be kind and um, compassionate to all things living and all things around you really. So all of this started to make me think and contemplate more and more about myself and my own existence because the only way to really change the world around you is to start with yourself, right? And I thought, okay, so how do I change the world around me? I've got to start with me. And how am I going to do that? And that's through these actions of being kinder, eating kinder. And I decided then to go and study more yoga philosophy in the States. And with that came uh, an opportunity to study chefing in Austin, Texas. Having come from an advertising background, I realized and I understood full well the power of a brand. And for me, my brand was gonna be kindness. I met Jay many years ago. He um, happened to be a yoga instructor at my sister's yoga studio. He had that real depth of his energy and kindness and compassion really shines out of him, out of every pore. My link to the sanctuary has been uh, through a very good friend, his sister and I go back uh, in our yoga journey together. We started studying a form of yoga which is called Jiva Mukti Yoga and uh, from Jiva Mukti's point of view the main aspect to it is animal rights and animal liberation. So the link 
per se to Grayton happens to be through the lineage of yoga which happens to be through Mike and his sister and yeah so there's quite a connection um, that has led us to this point. We have a snap scan code on our menu and that money goes straight to the sanctuary. It's their snap scan code. So that's one of the ways that you could give 10 bucks, five bucks, whatever works for you. Whenever you visit, that money can go straight to the sanctuary through snap scan. You can also come and volunteer your time and energy here at the sanctuary. You could get in touch with the Grayton Animal Farm Sanctuary. I think it's, it's really nice, like the initiative that Jay's doing with Grayton Farm Animal Sanctuary, um, because the ethics are online. You know, it's be kind and I guess that's what we're trying to do here as well. So it's a real pleasure to be able to work with him. Whatever we do in the cafe, we choose to do with that thinking in mind, that brand awareness in mind of compassion and kindness. So that comes down to the suppliers that we use, that comes down to the food that we perhaps go forage. We try and use brands that work within the same ethos that we work in or we go towards brands that we are ourselves inspired by and those brands happen to be global and local brands because I use Be Well Mayonnaise on a daily basis and the, the product that they've created for a simple small kitchen like ours has helped us efficiently create products day in day out that are consistent in taste quality and flavor. Being vegan doesn't mean that we close ourselves off to the rest of the world. Um, it's actually the contrary. We, the Kind Kitchen is all about creating food that everyone can enjoy, vegan, not vegan. And we ha actually have a lot of clientele that aren't close to being vegan and they come and enjoy a vegan meal. And that's exactly why I set out along this path to showcasing a vegan lifestyle for what it truly is, a lifestyle that imbues compassion for all beings and that's what I believe um, the vegan lifestyle is. Think about it, it's easy to say no or to be cold and unkind because it means you create barriers to protect yourself from the world around you. Inversely, being kind means breaking those barriers down and opening ourselves up to unlimited possibilities. The Kind Kitchen embodies this mantra, to be kind. And being kind in my mind means creating good, wholesome food for people to enjoy, which just so happens to be vegan. Oh, wow. wow, how's that? Yes, it looks so good. Right? Uh, and I love his philosophy, being, you know, breaking down those barriers to open yourself up to a world of other possibilities out there just by, by being kinder. Wow. Thank you very much for those words and inspiration. Absolutely. And again, just by being kinder and more mindful of our actions and choices, we create, you know, just a bright and more sustainable future for ourselves, our environment and our children. And it's so funny on social media today, we were speaking about, you know, veganism and yes. maybe some of the vegan recipes that people at home love and, uh, you know, have been trying. And we got some social media comments that came through. One from Lelo saying, good morning, guys. My favorite vegan meal is a quinoa salad, but I'm not vegan. That's cool. Okay. That's okay. so fine. Yeah. Anything quinoa is always good for me as well. I like quinoa. It's good. I think it's that allure of the ancient grain and the fact that it has the, it's a superfood, you know, and yeah. it was cultivated centuries ago. There just seems to be a mystique around it that I like quite a lot. That's, yeah. that's nice. You also engage mm -mm, in some mm -mm, quinoa? Mm -mm, quinoa? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No? But Blondie also is saying <laughs> something. She's saying, smoked cauliflower roasted with soy sauce basting topped with unsalted cashew nuts Yo. nestled, wait, listen to this. Listen. Nestled on a sauce made from almond milk. It's I Blondie, mean, our Blondie food writer. Nestled on a... Head of wait, wait, wait. Read, read that again in your fancy posh accent. Go. Smoked a cauliflower roasted with soy sauce basting top with unsalted cashew nuts nestled on a sauce made from almond milk. What is that accent? I don't know, but it just sounds like that whole recipe <laughs> is so good. It's a vegan accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned because uh, Chef Jay is in studio and will be cooking up a Be Well vegan recipe fit for a king. Or a queen. <laughs> Or a queen. Or a queen. <laughs> Be well. Love. Food. Life.
to your Feel Good Breakfast Show and we are here with Fulvio where we are going to have our very own yoga session right here on the show. So grab your mats and let's get started. Fulvio, are you still with us this morning? I'm right here waiting for you. Uh, I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm ready to get that balance and that harmony that you spoke about. So uh, if you'd like to take me through your demonstration, I am ready and waiting. We're going to start in a tabletop posture, which is very straightforward. So bring your hands below your shoulders on the floor. Put your knees below your hips on the floor. All right. And just kind of hang the belly down. So remember we were talking earlier that yoga has three components. And we're trying to just in a very short little section, try and harmonize those three components and bring them into equal balance. So the one of them that we're going to work on straight away is your breathing. So just for the remainder of the session, you're going to breathe in and out through the nose only. So as long as you can keep your mouth closed, breathe in and out through the nose. So strong inhalations, which bring the breath down deep into the chest and exhalations, which push the air out. But when you breathe out, feel like you're breathing out from the bottom of the lungs, like you're squeezing a toothpaste tube, like we're supposed to, from the bottom of the tube outwards. Cool. <laughs> then hang the head and hang the belly. Keep breathing through the nose. And then when you inhale, look forward at the face and push the chest and the throat forwards. It's called the cow breath. And then as you exhale, pull the chin into the throat, push into the palms, and pull the navel inwards and arch the spine. It's called the cat breath. And then repeat that cow breath again. Breathe in. So it's a strong inhale. And cat breath. Exhale. Push into the palms and arch the spine like an angry cat. Now, curl the toes under the feet and push into the hands and lift the hips upwards. This is a classic posture called a downward facing dog. Imagine that you have a long tail back behind you. And you're trying to lift that tail upwards towards the sky or the ceiling. While at the same time, straightening your arms and pushing into the palms. Relax the head. I remind you to breathe through the nose. So here we've got, we're coming into the, the kind of body component of our yoga practice. Can I ask you a question? Just in this position that I'm in currently, I'm feeling a lot of tightness behind the leg and the calf. Am I doing this correctly? Fantastic. You know what that tightness is? It's stretch. It's happening. So maybe your body, you do lots of running or gym or leg work. Yes. So you're a little bit tighter in the backs of your legs, in your hamstrings, in your knees. So this is awesome. You're pushing the heels towards the floor to try and find that straightening, stretching. Yes. Cool. Now we're going to start releasing that. So follow me. Lift up onto your toes and walk the feet to the front of your mat where you're going to do a forward fold. But in your forward fold, the classic thing about yoga is people say, oh my gosh, I can't do yoga because I can't fold forward with my legs straight. <laughs> just bend the knees. Everybody can touch your toes with your fingers. You just simply bend the knees. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a victim <laughs> of that. I think the knee bend is definitely helping cool. me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, use an inhalation, right, to come up to a high mountain. So you breathe like you're inflating yourself upwards, like, like a balloon. And then you look upwards towards the ceiling with the sky. And when you exhale, you bend your elbows and you bend your knees and you kind of dip the chest upwards. So we're going to do this a few times so you can get the feeling of it. Inhale, come back up to high mountain. Remember, nothing is tight, nothing is forced. And then exhale, look upwards, bend the elbows, bend the knees, like you're puffing the chest up towards the sky. Once more, inhale. Now come down again to your forward fold. Bend the knees. Remember, you want to touch the fingertips to the floor or to your toes. Plant the palms onto the floor at the front of your mat and walk backwards into plank pose, which in yoga is called palakasana, which palakasana. is plank. But we can just call it as a high push-up. Palakasana, like the plank. Again, feel your legs. So you've got nice strong legs. Press into your heels. Engage your thigh muscles. Feels good. Now, we're going to low plank, which is really just a low push-up. So you can either use the knees to the floor if you need to. Otherwise, keep the legs straight and just bend your elbows like you're doing a low push-up. And here comes the best posture of all. It's called upward facing dog. You surge the chest forward. Relax the tops of the feet. Straighten the arms. Have you got it there? Uh, yeah, I'm yes. still, yeah, I'm it's still feeling fantastic. a beautiful stretch up in the uh, anterior chain, right in front of that core and the like hips. Oh, you, loving like this right so now, man. Oh. <laughs> right in there. Yeah, this Return is really... to down dog. Lift up the hips, push into your palms. Check that your feet are correct. So again, you return to that stretch, pressing down the heels. So that little movement that we did is called a sun salutation. Traditionally done like early mornings. You can repeat it 108 times if you want to really stay traditional, but we don't have the time for that. So let's move on. <laughs> okay. I wish we did, yeah. <laughs> so 
<laughs> While you're in down dog, look at your right leg so things don't get confusing. Lift the right leg up into the air, straight up, press into the heel. You want to keep it straight. Remember, mindfulness. Step the right foot forward, like into a lunge. Drop the left heel onto the floor and come up into warrior one. So now we've changed from our sun salutation into the warrior poses. It's not tight. You're not gritting your teeth. You're just floating like that. Great. Then open to warrior two. So you reconfigure the chest. You open up the legs a little wider. Make sure two things. That that front knee is bent and that your back leg is absolutely straight. And then just settle down a little lower. You're looking great there. Perfect form. Um, uh, it might look good, but I'm I can up to tell you, Fulvio, I'm feeling all sorts of stretches <laughs> and stimulation out here. You feel it. Girdle, yes. The adductors and the abductors are loving this. I'm not going to lie. This is beautiful stuff. Fantastic. I know. And we're going to go there a little deeper now. So straighten all your legs. Come up into five-point stars. So you're stretching upwards. Almost like you're expanding out of your navel. And then keep the legs straight. Turn your toes in towards each other on your mat. It's called a wide-legged forward fold, which is exactly that. So fold down with your legs wide. Hang the arms. And because you and I have got pretty tight in you know, our legs, fold your arms and hold onto your elbows. You're just folding your arms. Hold onto your elbows. So you're free to hang and relax. Remember that yoga is going to energize us. You can already start feeling it. But the whole time we need to be poised, calm, and relaxed. Come up to high mountain pose. So release the arms. I mean, five point star. My apologies. Reach up. Everything stretching away from everything else. Bring the hands back to the center of your chest. And then with a slight bend in the knees, because we want to make it accessible, step to the front of your mat. Bring the feet together. Now, while Fulvio and I carry on with the rest of this flow session, the good news is that for all our viewers, you can stand a chance to win that 1,000 Rand Take A Lot voucher, and it's courtesy of Vita Town. And all you've got to do is reply to the Vita Town competition post on the Expresso Facebook page and Expresso Twitter page, and of course, tell us why you need Vita Town to boost your energy. And of course, don't forget to use the hashtag all day beast mode. And the competition closes on the 28th of August, 2020 at midnight, and terms and conditions can be found on the expresso show.com. Namaste. <laughs>Ah, thank you so much, James. I've got to say, that's the most relaxed beast mode we've ever had on the show. So now we're back in the kitchen. While every meat-free recipe should be delicious, some are just that extra bit unique and really do stand out. Introducing the Be Well Vegan Chicken Mayo Style Gourmet Sandwich. Yes, you heard it right. It's vegan and chicken in the same sentence. How are we going to do it? Well, the king oyster mushroom might have something to do with it. It's been shredded, fried until golden to make up the chicken elements in this dish, and Be Well have the mayo covered. Naturally. So we've got Chef Jay McNamara from The Kind Kitchen in the house to uh, help share this masterful meat-free creation with us. So let's stop, talk, stop talking and start cooking because my mouth is already salivating because I'm seeing the end result. Jay, uh, first of all, that was an awesome little feature on your, on your restaurant, yeah, which um, really your, your whole ethos, I think, has been a big part of what opened our eyes to the joys of vegan and the motivation behind maybe yeah. choosing to go meat-free in this instant. But... I think this is the verge that I'm sitting at now is where it's not just about having a substitute but taking it that step further. Mm -hmm. um, so now obviously we do have a chicken substitute in this space but I have found that mushrooms are the answer. They are the key yeah. to really good vegan cooking. So talk us through this beautiful mushroom Absolutely. selection that you've got here. Thanks, Graham. Yeah, so uh, we've got some grey uh, oyster mushrooms here. We've got uh, shimijis and shiitakes. Both of these here are great for salads. This one here is great for grilling, and so is this one, grilling and braai. So whenever someone says to you, but what are you going to eat at a braai? Well, bra. You're going to take this to a braai. Because it's also massive as well, yeah. which helps. So Packed with protein, like, so it's, it's awesome. And it's, it's got that, um, you know, we talk about the umami flavor profile that you, you kind of want from your meat substitute in this space. But I think we could even move beyond calling it a meat substitute. It's a hero in its own right. So Correct. Um, how are we going to treat it to create this beautiful shredded effect here going into our gourmet sandwich? Okay, so I've just started chopping here, Graham. Um, basically, what you want to do is get a fillet, okay? okay? So that's the first step. And uh, if 
if we can get a close up into this uh, beautifully uh, finished sandwich by Nicole that's done this today, set it all up. She's done all the great work already. <laughs> so uh, you can actually see the strands that kind of represent the chicken. Now, a lot of the times we do get that question, why are you trying to represent something that it's not, right? I didn't grow up hating meat. I grew up loving meat and meat is flavorsome, right? Yeah. But um, there's a lot of aspects to it that we, I don't want to associate so with kind. anymore, right? Yeah. And um, so that's why. So we still want to get those flavors. We still love those flavors. We miss those flavors. So the first thing we're going to do here is start to shred it. And I'm being a little bit gentle, but actually we don't need to. So I'm going to just, gonna really just get straight into it here. I'm going to get this pan going. And let's be honest, in a perfect world, yeah, everyone could make the leap across because you know how good the flavors are. You know the nutritional benefits, which I think should be first and foremost. But yeah. to help people become more comfortable with going vegan or at least introducing more vegetable based. Absolutely. Just make it more familiar, make it a flavor profile, something that they are familiar with. Um, and it also it satiates because we do eat with our eyes and our senses. And if it feels like a good hearty meal, 10 to 1, you're going to appreciate it and savor it like um, yeah. such. And you know, Graham, the, the big thing with mushrooms straight off the bat here, yeah, mushrooms, why are they our go-to faux meat? Mushrooms are full of umami. Okay, so that's the thing that um, actually gives meat its flavor. It's that all rounded, that full roundedness flavor in the mouth. Something's just popped out of my ears here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just sanitize for a second. So yeah, that's, that's what uh, mushrooms have going for them straight away. So um, mushrooms, we don't have to try too hard, like you said. So we're just pulling the mushrooms. We're getting them to a stringy-like texture. And at, at this point, it looks just like shredded chicken, and you can call it shredded chicken if you want to. Um, I love it. And obviously, we, we're coming at this from a very nutritional element here, which is probably the most important part. And when we talk about our beer well, we are blessed here, sustainably yeah. made exclusively using locally sourced GMO free canola oil. And in fact, we were talking about this earlier. They are the only oil to carry the Cancer Smart Choice seal of approval, um, which is, I think, a first in South Africa, which, um, you know, obviously is associated to um, when they derive this, those cancer-causing ingredients that we so often take in without even realizing. So the fact that this has gone through such a stringent process of quality control is yep. something that you really do get to benefit from. Read the labels, read the labels, read the know labels, what guys. you're putting yep. into your body, man. Okay, so here we're running out of time here. So um, do we want to go over to the segment over there, the actual plated uh, element mm. to show people what we've got here. So we've cooked up the chicken aspect over here. So the bottom of this, we've got our Be Well mayonnaise. That's the base. We've got our Dijon mustard. We've got our gherkins. We've got our herbs, which is basil, coriander, lemon juice, all in there mixed up, creating a beautiful um, uh, flavor sensation at the bottom, which you can see in this uh, fish. Killer, item. We've got uh, some red cabbage, we've got some cos lettuce, cherry tomatoes, our chicken and our avo. So uh, a lot of rainbow colors to make it delicious and good for the body as well. And appealing and, and it's making my mouth water so much I can I can hardly <laughs> talk man. Um, with just quick note here, when cooking the mushroom, how long do you need to cook it for to get it to the right consistency? Right, I mean, so we're just going for it browned, so it's already almost done there. Um, wow. Just adding a little bit of the simple elements like salt and pepper and then a little bit of lemon juice for that acid uh, to break it down a little bit. And that's all you really need, you know, for about three minutes. Wow. And um, I've really rudimentarily just kind of tossed it around there, but that's all we actually need. That's pretty much done. Absolutely beautiful. That's the chicken's part of it already done and moving into the bowl itself. Well, we apply the finishing touches. You can take another gander at this beautiful end result here. If you want this full recipe, you can find it on our website along with a ton of culinary inspiration. Expressoshow.com is where you can go to. You can see some of the other amazing creations from Nicole and our kitchen team. And of course, some beautiful Jane, gherkins. Gherkin, you've got to have gherkins. it. That's, but that's uh, Gherkin. to the mayo. You, you've got to have a, a, a little bit of a crunch in there as well. All our herbs, beautiful. basil, coriander. I know we've run out a lot of time here, so uh, it looks I hope that was fun for you. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely amazing, dude. You've opened my eyes and you've got me excited about vegan eating and also about making those kind choices. So think about that as you sink your teeth into that That's beauty. That's what it should look like. It. That's kind of what it was getting to. It looks amazing. <laughs>
love, food, life. Welcome back to it, you beautiful people. Yes, it is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. We're live on SABC3. It's so good to have you here as we start a brand new day, a brand new Tuesday, brand new opportunity to make brand new decisions. We're feeling brand new. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's also <laughs> feeling brand new. Who is? Kutle was out in Durban with the Gormstar uh, Tipsy. Oh, nice. I mean, so she's at Afrotainment. Yes. Okay, as I say, Afro. Come on. As I say, Afrotainment. You can see Kutle over there uh, getting her dose of uh, Gorm dance lessons over there you see it's gonna be a fun time but it's time for us now uh, to find out what's happening in and around the world here's cat with the news Thanks, team. Let's get right into it. On the national news front, Transport Minister Figilim Balula says regulations regarding alcohol consumption should be tightened to ensure that people do not drink and drive. Mbalula yesterday visited families of the three deceased Metro police officers who died in a head-on collision on Sunday morning when their vehicle collided with a vehicle driven by a suspected drunk driver. Mbalula said he's lobbying government to introduce legislation that there should be 0% alcohol in driver's blood when tested. Gauteng has received its first batch of 1,000 ventilators from the Solidarity Fund. Acting Health MEC Jacob Mamabolo said the ventilators were inexpensive, had other useful patients, uh, patient indicators and were manufactured locally. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Zuelim Kiza said 1,677 new coronavirus cases had been recorded in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 611,450. The death toll now stands at 13,159. Mkiza attributed the high recovery rate of 83% to the work of healthcare workers. On the international news front, talks in Mali aimed at resolving the political situation in the aftermath of last week's coup have ended without agreement. West African leaders have said that the disposed president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, uh, should be reinstated. But envoys from regional body ECOWAS was, uh, failed to convince Mali's military leaders that this was the way forward. And the idea that Keita could return to power may have been... Uh, scuppered by the man himself as he has been quoted as saying he no longer wished to return to office. Now the renowned Charit um, Hospital in Berlin treat, <coughs> excuse me, apologies for that, <coughs> something in the air this morning. Now, this uh, Chariot Hospital in Berlin treating leading Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny said yesterday that test results indicated he had been poisoned by a nerve agent contradicting the findings of Russian doctors. The 44-year-old Kremlin critic and anti-corruption campaigner had, or was brought to the German capital on Saturday after falling ill in an internal flight in Russia on Thursday. Now, his supporters believe he was poisoned by something in his tea at the airport before he took off. He is in intensive care and is still in a critical coma. His prognosis remains unclear. And now all about the heroism of our teenagers and a young boy. Braden Powell is an under-12 nipper at Fishhook Surf Lifesaving Club near Cape Town, where he has received high praise for his bravery and alertness. Um, and at Port Alfred, four teenagers, Jessica Harty, who's 15, Kendra Schumann, 14, and Jadlin Schumann, 15, and Jack Buerta, 16 years old, have been lauded for their heroic efforts in saving an 11-year-old boy from drowning. 
Now, while on the beach, Braden noticed two men on an inflatable mattress. He paddled out to them where he learned they couldn't swim. Fortunately, his training as a nipper kicked in and he told them to remain motionless on the mattress. Then, using his knee board uh, as, a float, as a float and his legs as a rudder, he maneuvered them back to shore. The four Port Alfred teenagers were on the beach when they witnessed a boy being swept out to sea. Without hesitation, they plunged into the surf and brought him safely back ashore. The four have been commended by the NSRI for their brave deed, and Braden's community at Fishhook is calling for him to be awarded a medal for his bravery. And now news of the Korean boy band BTS smashing a YouTube record. Dynamite, the latest single by the Korean boy band BTS, has become the first video to achieve 100 million views in one day. It has also smashed YouTube records and will in all probability be the UK's number one single this Friday. It was watched 101.1 million times in 24 hours after its release last Friday, surpassing the previous record set by fellow K-pop band Blackpink, whose song How You Like That racked up 86.3 million views in 24 hours in June. Moreover, more than 3 million fans tuned in to watch the clip's live premiere, almost double the previous record, also held by Blackpink's How You Like That. Dynamite is BTS's first single to be sung entirely in English. The boy band said they wished to convey positive vibes, energy, hope, love, the purity, everything and the septet first teased the video in july at the time they explained that they were currently preparing an album for the second half of the year well on that record smashing note that's it for the news at seven o'clock we'll have another roundup at eight right now here's another look at news from the sporting world Thanks so much, Kat. Let's kick it off with our Monday night football action. And we saw our reigning Premier Soccer League champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, finally take the gap and close in on log leaders Kaiser Chiefs after a 1-0 victory over Golden Arrows. The Brazilians are now only three points behind the Amakosi. Now, the results from yesterday, it was yet another draw for Bidvest Fitz, who drew 0-0 against Maritzburg United and Amazulu FC and Bloom Celtic. They also shared the spoils at two apiece. There'll be just one PSL fixture this evening as Black Leopards face off against Supersport United. That one kicking off at 6 p.m. Then a further afield onto cricket, bad lights and rain forced an early stumps on the fourth day of the third test between England and Pakistan at the Rose Bowl in Southampton yesterday. Visitors trailing England by 210 runs with eight wickets in hand. The day ending with Pakistan on 100 for two with Azhar Ali on 29 and Baba Azam on four. Uh, talk about a massive milestone. England's James Anderson now sits on 599 wickets. 38-year-old is just one shy of becoming only the fourth bowler to achieve this incredible milestone in history. The test between England and Pakistan will continue from 12 p.m. SA time this afternoon. Then on to tennis, the 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams overcame Dutch qualifier Ataranta Ruth. 7-6 uh, six, six, rather, 3-6, six, 7-6 six, to advance to the Western and Southern Open round of 16. The third seeded Williams beat her opponents in a time of 2 hours and 49 minutes on the grandstand court at the National Tennis Center in New York. Next, she will face 13th seed Maria Sakari of Greece. As we leave our sport for now, we're now going to cross to Durban, where Kutle is standing by to take us through our weather. A very good morning to you, team. A good morning to you, our beautiful Expresso viewers. I am coming to you live from a very special place this morning. We are out at the Afrotainment Studio out in Durban. We're going to be meeting someone really special, the leading lady of Gom Music. I am talking about Utipsi. But before we get into that, let's have a look at the weather report. But first, we have asked you to send in your sunrise pictures. Umpumele Longa answered the call and sent through uh, this gorgeous uh, sunrise picture, peeking through the horizon in Peter Mary. You can expect a gorgeous day with temperatures kicking off with 11 to a maximum of 29 degrees. Linda McMillan also sent through the sunrise picture in Durban where I am reporting live from. Temperatures here range from 14 to 26 degrees. It's definitely going to be an also beautiful morning. You too can contribute to our weather report by sending in your sunrise selfies on our social media platforms, Expresso Show uh, SABC3. 
Officials in Louisiana and Texas yesterday urged uh, residents to prepare for a rare one-two punch from Tropical Storm Marco and Hurricane Laura, which are expected to pound the state this week within about 48 hours of each other. Meteorologists say it's extremely rare for the Gulf of Mexico to have a hurricane and a tropical storm at the same time. The last time this happened was in 1959. Laura has also uh, already caused the deaths of at least nine people in the Caribbean and is expected to be become a Category 3 hurricane with whipping winds of at least 180 kilometers an hour uh, before it makes landfall. Laura is also expected to dump torrential rain from Louisiana all the way to Florida. But we're going to bring it back home to for the temperatures for the rest of this country. The South African Weather Service has reported that it's going to be a fine to warm uh, day across the country this morning, starting off at Bologuane with a maximum of 26 degrees. It's a sunny day also in Bombela at a maximum temperature of 32 degrees. Pretoria, 825 for your temperatures for the day. Josie Maboneng, your low is 7, reaching a high of 23. Mahikeng, 1129. Glegstort, 929. And Kimberley, the big hole, 9 is the start of your morning, reaching a high of 30 degrees. Bloemfontein starts off on a cold note at 3 degrees, but your afternoon temperature is 25 degrees. Richards Bay, 2029. Peter Maritzburg, it's a sunny one for you at a maximum of 29 degrees. Durban, South Africa's playground, and we will learn why it's called that in a second at a low of 14, reaching a high of 26, down to the eastern Cape Pemtata, a partly cloudy day at a maximum of 20, 32 degrees, rather. Also in Mondi, East London, 21 is your maximum for the day. Cradock starts off the morning on a low of 5 degrees with an afternoon temperature of 30. The friendly city, my hometown Port Elizabeth, a low of 13, reaching the high teens to 17 degrees. George, partly cloudy, 11, 21. Cape Town, who expects some rain today, a 52% chance of rain and a low of 11, reaching a high of 19. Vusta, partly cloudy day for you, 819. Sutherland, very chilly note, below zero and minus five with an afternoon temperature of 19. And lastly, Appington, a low of 10 degrees and uh, afternoon temperature of 31. Well, that's a wrap of your seven o'clock weather report, but make sure to keep it locked to your feel good breakfast show because we're going to be talking to the leading lady of Grom. I'm talking about Tipsy. You don't want to miss out. <laughs> Tonight at 7.30, join us on the Insider SA as we explore stories of collaboration. See how local craftsmen came together to build an architectural masterpiece in the Karoo. Award-winning musician Vusi Nova joins forces with his fans to create a hit single. And meet the husband and wife team who have kept South Africans fit and losing weight during lockdown. The Insider SA. Tonight at 7.30. Repeat Saturday night at 8. Only on SABC3.
Yes, it is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. Now, before we get cooking, Willie's along with the Gift of the Givers, they've teamed up with an aim of distributing 1 million meals to families in need. And with over 815,000 meals already donated, we are so close, so, so close to reaching that goal. Now, each food care pack, yes, is done with love, prepared with love, but it's filled with a balance of protein, fresh fruit, vegetables, and other staples, as well as hygiene products to help curb the spread of COVID-19. And that's, that's what we want to be hearing. But of course, as little as 10 Rand can provide one person with three meals, that's something to think about. Uh, it provides them with three meals for an entire day. And all you have to do is scan the QR code that's on your screen right now using the SnapScan app or your banking app and donate today, please. Any donation will obviously go to make a huge difference. And remember to encourage everyone in your circles to do the same, your family, your friends, your neighbors, everybody uh, must bend together and we can all make a, a, a difference because together we will, right? Yeah. Now, if you're looking for a plant-based alternative for scrambled eggs, well, you're in luck because Chef Clem is making tofu scrambled eggs. Without the eggs, uh, this plant-based miracle is spiced with turmeric, paprika, and cumin, as well as, obviously, uh, we know that it could not be easier to make. We're literally taking minutes. We're talking minutes here on how to bring this to life on the table. Well, Clem, this is, this is quite something. Eggs so without what I the wanted eggs, to actually, scrambled eggs. I wanted to actually like not let you read out what the dish was. Yeah. And then cover this and then yeah. open it and be like, what are we making? Because uh -huh. if you look at that, what do you see? Eggs. It looks exactly like eggs. Scrambled eggs. Exactly. Hey. And I'm loving this whole meat-free talk. And it smells so good. Because I'm not a, I'm not a vegetarian. Yeah. I'm not a vegan. Yeah. I'm not a like serious carnivore. I kind of consider myself a flexitarian. Yeah. So I'll a go through these. I'll go through these ways where like mm. I'll spend a week just eating seafood, mm. and the next week I'll go meat free, yes. and the next week I'll just be like, you know, yeah. whatever. Which is great because that's an, an amazing way for me to get my head around different type of cuisines, and then I get to come here and yeah. tell South Africa about it. Yeah. And this is such a great recipe. It's not just only if you're like want to be meat free. Mm. It's a really good recipe. Yeah. It tastes so good. So whether or not you're, you're vegan, this would still be a good enough meal to have. This is something you would be keen yeah. and open to exploring and mm -hmm. trying out and experimenting with, regardless, of your, regardless. Uh, of your state, whether you're vegan or vegetarian or nothing, or, or, mm -hmm. or none of the above. Well, this is very interesting. We're going to be making it now. You're going to show us how to make it. But of course, we invite you to uh, tag along uh, on this experience, on this vegan or plant-based journey, rather, uh, by going on our website, www www.expressoshow.com. We've got the recipe with all the ingredients there. We've got the recipe. Let's cool. get cooking. So I've got my pan on and it's a little, it's quite hot, but I mean, what I like about this is Asian food in general, like yeah. when it's nice and high heat, mm -hmm. you get everything going, walk, 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 done. Quick. It's perfectly cool. Quick. So you could use olive oil, you could use canola oil. Yeah. You know, I've got some coconut oil because I raided Nicole's pantry and I was like, hey, let's use some coconut oil today. So I that's going to go. Nicole's also got, she's got variety. You can. She's got an amazing day, pantry. You can use a different thing. Absolutely. So, okay, oil, the coconut oil's going in there and that's yeah. going to start melting. Mm -hmm. Let's start prepping our tofu. So, tofu is really, really great. It comes from soybeans. Mm. And soybeans, you've been exposed to for yes. sure. You yes. realize soy sauce gets yes. in there. Yes. You know, We've all had um, soybean in some form or another, yeah. and I just love how versatile it is and how creative people get with it, mm. and they create amazing recipes like this. This one's from Taste, and it's absolutely such a good recipe. Love it. So gonna, you, in Willys, you find the silken tofu. Okay. You get different types of tofu. You get the firmer tofu. Mm -hmm. We're using the silken tofu, which is what you'd find in store. Yeah, what's the difference? The texture. Okay. So this one is silken, super silky, oh. super crumbly, soft. And then the firmer tofus are the ones that you can actually slice almost like cheese yeah. and you can grill them, you can smoke them. Okay. It's so good. Okay, so cool. I'm guessing that that heats up quicker because of its silky uh, texture. Yeah, and the good thing is you're not changing the texture too much, you're just warming it through, yeah. which is really great. Okay. So into your bowl, you're gonna go with, oh. your, with your tofu. Mm -hmm. So it normally comes out as a brick like that. Yeah. And then all you're gonna do is like gonna add to it. Yeah. And it crumbles up so easy. I mean, it's, look, take a look at that. It's so, so great. Okay, so no refrigeration it until yeah. opened, obviously, you know, no preservatives, long shelf life, that's per perfect, that's what you want to know. Exactly. Okay? Cool. Good protein in as well, so, okay, salt going in, mm -hmm. some pepper. I love the fact that it's quite neutral in flavor, it doesn't really taste that much, which for me which is, is always exciting because it's begging then for a flavors to come yeah, in. Yeah, it's like a black so canvas, definitely. you can add whatever you like and it'll, yeah. it'll tune up to whatever flavors you're into. Let's go with the first part that makes this look like egg, and that's turmeric. Okay. Turmeric gives it that nice yellow color, mm -hmm. so that's great, that's going in there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of onion flake going in, make it nice and savory. And the onion flakes as well, I'm using the dried version, while those fry off, it stays, like the texture stays there, mm. which I love. Mm. A bit of garlic going in, mm -hmm. we love, love, love garlic. I mean, for breakfast as well, there's nothing wrong with that. 
with garlic. Yeah. No, you've got the whole day to sort of Absolutely. get rid of... A bit of cumin going yeah. in, and that's just adding more depth to it. Yeah. And then finally, a little bit of smoked paprika. Oh, yes. I like scrambled eggs in general with a bit of smoked paprika uh, on the top. I'll have anything with uh, smoked paprika. It just adds that instant, like, braai flavor. I mean, mm. smell that. That's so good. So now let's talk. Okay, cool. All we're going to do now is we're going to now, we're going to scramble it. Yeah. And so literally, all you're going to do is just mash. And it really, it starts to take on this, like, eggy form. You know what? Eggs can be so technical, Clem. Is that, oh. I mean, look, I'm not the best in the kitchen. As, as most people will tell you. What? Yeah, I just, you know. I didn't know I, it's that. not my main thing. It's not. I have other things I'm good at, but cooking isn't one of those things. And sometimes I get eggs right, sometimes I get them wrong. Sometimes I get scrambled eggs right, sometimes I get them wrong. Most so, times I get them oh, wrong. Oh, wait, we actually did a challenge. Do you remember? Together, we did a challenge remember? in the kitchen. Yeah. Look, you, I applaud you for your commitment to try and executing. I mean, yeah. it was supposed to be a fried egg, but it ended up being a bit of a scrambled <laughs> egg. But I love the fact that you stuck with it, you committed. And what you put out was actually not that bad. You're my favorite troll because you troll with a smile. <laughs> hey, no, your egg was beautiful. It was both, it was both undercooked and crispy at the same oh, time. But 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 mm. rest, that's how recipes form. Yeah. Out of like things that happen okay, in the so kitchen. I created a whole recipe there. But what you I was trying to get me. to, I uh, would get at, is that I like that this is so easy to sort of put together with very little room for error. You really have to work so hard to get it wrong. You have to work so hard to get your scrambled eggs wrong yeah. with this recipe. Uh, yeah. And if you do want this recipe, go on our website. It's expressoshow.com. I really do like this. I really, I think I'm, I'm connecting with this. I'm drawn to it. I'm falling in love with it. Uh, this is definitely my new way. Uh, I'll be sending you some pictures, Clem, of myself uh, making this uh, alternative. Let's Please see. do. Oh, look at so that. So again, you're not trying to cook it. You're just trying to warm it through. It didn't take 10 seconds. It didn't even. take 10 seconds. You're just trying to warm it through. If you wanted, you can add more turmeric. You can add more garlic. You can add more onion. Mm. Just make it your own. Absolutely. Yeah. Tabzi, you actually do inspire me in the kitchen. I love, love, love being in the kitchen with you Aww. because you're so excited every time we make something. Oh, thank Uncle you Tabzi. so much. I'm excited every single time because I get to taste your you, delicious you stuff. Do, you do, uh, But of course, South Africa. With that said, expressoshow.com, that's where the recipe is with all of the ingredients. Uh, from me and Chef Clem, breakfast is served. Mm. Mm. And so while you enjoy your breakfast at home, perhaps a cup of coffee to get the day started, let's connect with Sister Kutle Adams, who now joins us live from Durban, linking up with one of the hottest names in Gom. Looks like a Vosha or two might drop. We couldn't come to Durban and meet up with one of the best in the game out at the Afrotainment Studios. I am talking about the leading lady of GOM music. I am talking about the leading artist of GOM music. Actually, it's none other than Tip C. Tip C is such a vibe, you guys. You have no idea. As soon as I walked into the studio, she said to me, Go, Shanti, go and interview you. That thing. That thing. Relax. She's just naturally energetic, naturally beautiful. Tip C. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. Oh, man, you're so awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Your energy stems from somewhere, I'm pretty sure. And that's what motivated you, you know, your love for music. Where did it all start for you, especially it for music? Um, actually, it started 2009 when I was still under a um, CF of Africa. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an artist. I've always wanted to be under a entertainment. So I've always been to Tira, Tira, can you, like, please try me? I'm going to say, oh, no, I'm going to go to the school. I'm going to go So I used to come to the studio, I record a big nose, and um get back to the studio. No, 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 no. So I was born with no potential call. And then I did go, I'm a daughter, okay, Tira, I'm going to go. I did do my lume. Oh no, I think it's essentially currently. He signed me after two months. Just so like that. Just like that. Yeah. Yo, just from hanging around and, and four, also years. four years. Four years signed under Afrotainment. Yeah. So Indoyako was hanging around, being determined, yeah. persistent. Pers yes. Persistent. Utibana, listen, I have the I talent. I have the talent. Yeah. And he gave you that talent. Yeah. Yo, that shout out to Dira. Shout out to Dira, man. Yeah. Afrotainment <laughs> is home to great mm. Nak music. DJ Dira. Yeah. Oh, that I'm so Mm. Your latest album, The mm. Sniper. Let's start about, you know, where the name comes from. I'm going to say, a sniper into angles, into tubular. 
<laughs> so la ganga o tshalo go sinawe a sene mina ngo tipsi am the sniper nga tubula ang sabluso nga tubula nje kwasani toma zani ufana i'm here who are you featuring in that in that album, album it's um okay so do you know mampija professor beast jasam shungisi destruction boys uh, yo, yo, everyone yo. in the everyone. game basically yeah. Yeah. yo it's going to be a fire album tipsi yeah. oh that's awesome <laughs> then now also your latest single mm. that is soon to drop featuring that I'm sure you that you just mentioned as and well and and draga and draga as drega. well yeah the ama koshi koshi ama <laughs> I was inspired by Ingo Ilo Kuzani in Jalunga Gujala when I was still young. I used to play skipping rope and it was kinda cool. And there was a scam and it's what I'm a shikoshi. Sang sang as a studio Utreka Jali beats and I'm gonna come and some ish and the corner and I'm jalling it to a mashikosh and then your feet are cut. Just like that. Just like that. Gosh. Gosh. Can you please teach me the move too? I'm a she gosh. I said, wow. Just like, wow. I'm a she gosh. I'm a she gosh. I'm a she gosh. Don't stop, 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 performance lockdown has hit many artists across yeah. the board how yeah. did that how did you manage to keep your head above the water um and my savings mm. uh, yeah it's very important to my save save mm. save um mr seven this is my saving my savings a two double so yeah go back soon because i came out of this there was no income mm. but then your guys are my theater is there you were supposed to send so mm. when support i was doing like more music yes. in the studio it looked down in his engine more music. more music that's yeah. what we love hearing from our favorite artists when can we expect the album drop next month next month I'm September are yeah. coming through in September September the leading lady of go music everybody tipsy she's still here on your feel good breakfast show make sure to keep it locked she's gonna be performing giving us an exclusive of Amashi Goshi I got it right mm. now Amashi Goshi yeah. I'm a god sad I'm a god sad I'm a What's better than a sugar-coated, deliciously crispy golden brown donut and 100% Arabica beans brewed to perfection? Treat yourself and warm up your morning with a little sweetness from Mac Cafe with the all-new mini donut and cappuccino offer. A little lovin' doesn't have to cost a lot. Great coffee, simple.
for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso here on SABC3. In last week's Engram Skin Session, we looked at how toxic masculinity is defined and how it can be addressed. Now, parents of boys are obviously no strangers to the term boys will be boys. It's a term that's used to rationalize habits that excuse prejudice, misogyny, and they send out an overall message that men are not accountable for their actions. That's wrong. Now, the issue of toxic masculinity and gender-based violence is not a new one to our guests. Uh, that we're chatting to this morning. In fact, we're joined by award-winning writer, performer, producer, and activist, Lev Mashile, as well as founder of Father and Nation, Craig Wilkinson, who runs an NPO that works with men in various communities. Craig has spent many years fighting toxic masculinity and striving to equip men, lots of men, to be great fathers and leaders in society. Good morning, guys. Good morning, great to be here. Good morning to everyone, thank you. It's great to see you both here on our Feel Good Breakfast show. The conversation that we're about to have is unfortunately not a new one, especially in South Africa. Violence against women is not a unique South African issue, but the scale of it in our country is in a league of its own. What are the main causes of gender-based violence and how does it impact the rate in which it is growing? It's a great question. It's a difficult question. I mean, South Africa is known as the rape capital of the world and our femicide rates five times the global average. I, you know, the, the biggest cause of gender-based violence, for me, there are two. One is uh, wounded men, wounded masculinity. Men who grow up unfathered and unmentored and unvalidated in their masculinity. And when they arrive at adulthood, there's just so many issues internally with them. There's a desperate need to prove themselves. There's a sense of, I'm not enough. I'm inadequate. I don't have what it takes. And so we find men pitching up in one of two ways. They either become very passive and withdraw and, and fail to take responsibility and withdraw to all kinds of addictions to make themselves feel better. Or they pitch up and they say, I have to prove myself. I have to dominate. I have to control to, to prove that I am a man. Mm. And the second reason is, is that uh, is we have false ideas of what it means to be a man. You know, we grow up in a society where we kind of the four big lies I, I talk about masculinity, we grow up with our sex, power, money, and big boys don't cry. Mm. You know, so men have the sense that uh, the more women I have, the more of a man I am. Mm. An absolute lie. The more power I have, the more of a man I am. And it's not about your power, it's about what you do with it. Mm. Uh, and money, you know, I need money to be a man. And, and fourthly, big boys don't cry. I'm not allowed to, as a man, to, to be vulnerable and to show my feelings. And so if you have wounded men with a false concept of what it means to be a man, you have a serious problem. And I, I think at the root of all of that is fatherlessness. South Africa, uh, some of our statistics say that up to 60% of children are growing up without a father. And a boy who grows up unfathered, unmentored, and untaught what it means to be a good man uh, is in a dangerous situation. Mm. And I guess in that instance as well, then, Craig, even the boys who do grow up with their fathers, if they're growing up with fathers leading such bad examples, then they become the same as their fathers. And so it's a cycle that never ends. Uh, but w what are the key signs and triggers that are often ignored or not discussed when it comes to uh, this conversation level? Well, firstly, I love what Craig has said. Um, I think it's it's very clear and it's honest and it places the onus on men for for their own healing and, and to take responsibility for what has happened to, to, to masculinity and, and to the men of our country. Um, I think we have to root the behavior that we see in history. Uh, Dr. Pumla Gola talks about how rape is a language in South Africa. And I think uh, gender-based violence, violence against women, violence against everyone who is perceived as weaker, whether it's women or queer people or children, you know, everybody outside of men. Um, that violence is, it has its origins in, in slavery. It has its origins in colonialism. It has its origins in apartheid. Um, and the many historical forces that have shaped who we are, you know, migrant labor, the, the, the breaking of families, conscription, you know, 350 years of conscription, of, of this kind of ritualized, violent masculinity um, the, 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 that is at the formation, that is in the formation of our country. Um, so I think first and foremost, we have to be honest about that, that this is something that was handed to us, mm. you know? Um, and I think once we can acknowledge that, then we can begin to take 
responsibility for it. If you can be socialized into something, then you can be socialized into something else. Um, it doesn't mean that because we we find ourselves, you know, the 350 years into this story that we can't change it. We know that it's a story. Stories are written. You can write new stories. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what the, the point that we're sitting at right now is how do we how do we create a masculinity that is purposeful, um, that is that is about about peace and building in our country? How do we center that? How do we take the focus away? Because we also reward violent masculinity, and we have to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. um, the heroes that we emulate, you know, we we're in love with thugs, we're in love with the violence, we're in love with with uh, people who who break these norms. Uh, that's the masculinity that we that we uphold and that. We, that we revere, you know? So we also have to question ourselves. Every time we endorse uh, a corrupt politician, mm -hmm. every time we venerate a criminal, every time we um, keep silent, when we know that somebody is abusing on, one, on the one hand, but is very successful in other parts of their lives, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so we keep quiet about what they do over here. Mm -hmm. and, and that's up to us. We can change that. Mm. I love that. Mm. This label mentions something that's very important and something that is easily overlooked. The fact that everything that we are is interconnected to what we were before and mm. what our forefathers have gone through. So as mm. she's mentioned, it's something that's given to us, but it's time for us to take a stand and do something about it. This one goes out to you, Lebu and Craig. What are the actionable steps that both men and women, whether they are friends or family members, mm. can do to support each other and drive fundamental mental, impactful change. I think owning your story is a great place to start for any change. Mm. Um, reflect on what has happened to you. Reflect on your experiences. What are the examples of relationships that you grew up with? What are the examples of masculinity, of, of femininity that you grew up with? Mm. How did that shape the person that you are? How has that impacted your relationships? These are things that I've been able to explore in my own life uh, because of books or because of um, therapy, which are also great options as well. I mean, now with the internet, there's so many... Uh, therapeutic resources that are available online, on YouTube, on, on different streaming platforms, um, starting with your own inner personal development. Mm -hmm. the, every change that you see happening on the outside starts on the inside. And then also holding yourself and the people around you accountable, you know? It, stop keeping silent when the people close to you are being abused or are abusing, mm. you know, hold people accountable. Also, we need to hold ourselves accountable for violent behavior. I think one of the biggest things that we can do as parents, and I know that this is controversial and it doesn't come from a judgmental space because again, it's what we were handed. One of the biggest things that we can do as parents and as caregivers of children is to not hit our children. Mm. Um, and even though we grew up being hit and we understand why, you know, we were hit and it doesn't make our parents and our caregivers bad people, you know, they were also socialized into this. Mm. But we cannot teach young people to respect themselves and respect their bodies and to not act out violently if we treat them with violence. Mm. You know, we're, 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 we're programming it into their bodies and then we turn around hypocritically and say, stop being violent. Why? When the people who love you the most are violent towards you mm. and, and, and tell you that they're doing this in the name of love of course you're going to do that in your relationships too mm. of course um, I'm sure Craig can offer other tools because you know his way of thinking and sharing is so practical I appreciate that mm. thanks Lilo I, I mean I think I agree with you 100% it starts with us doesn't it, it starts as with each of us as individuals I think a couple of points I mean the, 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 the most destructive perpetrators of gender-based violence are men. Mm. Um, and so men need to really stand up and drive this charge. And I think it's so important to know that no boy is born abusive. No boy is born a rapist. No boy is born a misogynist. Mm. Something happens on the journey from boy to man. Mm. And I think that journey is something we need to look at as a society. Because young boys look to their fathers, or older men, in the absence of a biological father, to model to them what it means to be a man. So we need to examine ourselves, every single man, and say, you know what? I think every man, to some degree, has some woundedness in his heart about a man. Some sense of, am I enough? Am I adequate? You know, the imposter syndrome. So we need to look in the mirror and say, I need to go on a journey of healing and restoration for myself as a man. Number one. Number two, I need to examine my beliefs. My beliefs around what it means to be a man. Uh, you know, power is a great thing. Strength is a wonderful thing. Men are gifted with physical strengths and testosterone and, 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 and a natural sort of drive and aggression. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's how we utilize that. Is what we do with that. Uh, electrical power is a great thing. It can power a whole city. 
but it can also kill somebody if it's misused. And the same with masculinity. So we need to examine our beliefs about what we believe masculinity is. And we also need to examine our beliefs about women. Do we believe that women are inferior? Do we believe that I can own a woman? Mm-hmm. Do we believe that as a man, I need to uh, be dominant over a woman? That's a misbelief and a false belief. I believe men and women are equal, but stunningly different. And this beautiful dance between the genders is what co-creates a wonderful world. So it starts with us examining our beliefs. Mm. I think as women too, I mean, these are things that men need to do and drive. As a woman, I think number one thing is to not accept false masculinity. Don't accept it. If you're ever in a situation where you're feeling threatened or less than or demeaned in any particular way, draw the line and say, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and I think another practical thing to do is let's get allies. You know, If ever you're a man and you feel like you, you're leading towards being abusive, call out to people. Say, look, uh, you know, let's stop it in its tracks. And if you're a woman in a relationship or any kind of situation where you feel as though you're being mistreated in any way, reach out. You know, uh, Set the alarm. Because when we isolate ourselves, uh, we have uh, we're in trouble. We could go down a very dark road. I love that. But I also do love this this message that uh, roots your organization, the Father and Nation Initiative, uh, which includes a free online course uh, or a range of them that are available on your website. And of course, an information booklet out there as well. Craig, please tell us more about these really incredible resources uh, that, that are available and how we can take a pledge online. Well, we are very excited. We just launched, uh, I wrote a little book called No Excuse for Abuse, which looks at the, the four reasons why men abuse, not excuses, the five actions men can take, and the five actions women can take to add their power. And we've uh, converted that into an online resource, which we, 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 during Women's Month, this month, we've made available free to anyone in South Africa. You know, We're basically saying there's no excuse, you can step up. So www.fatheranation.com .co.za and then forward slash no excuse. It's a free resource. It's a course, four modules, videos, exercises, and some reading material. And we challenge every man uh, and we also invite every woman to do the course and then use that as a means to step up and take action. Mm. And then we encourage men to form bands of brothers, groups of brothers that get together and they talk, they have conversations around positive masculinity. Mm. You know, for me, the, the solution to toxic masculinity is healthy masculinity. We don't need to emasculate the whole of men. We need to say good masculinity is a powerful, wonderful thing. And the more men step up and be good men, the less we're going to have toxic masculinity mm. in the world. So thank you. That's a, a resource available to anyone who wants to take uh, take advantage of it. And it sounds empowering. Yes, yeah, truly it's so, empowering. so, so empowering. I this love that. This conversation was absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Lebo Mashile and Craig Wilkinson, for joining us this morning. I wish we could have a longer conversation because it's a multi-layered one of which mm. we need to get into each corner because if you consider women mm. occupying spaces in different industries, they're also faced with these kinds of instances and we need to know what they can do, you know, to feel safe in saying no, which is mm. what has been encouraged today. Yeah. We took it from history mm. where it came from Mm -hmm. we are taking it now to practical steps in how we can change the narrative and write a new story label craig thank you so much for joining us i hope that you have a fantastic women's month by the way women's month is every single month Uh, really fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. I found this uh, really powerful message from the Father and Nation uh, that really resonated with me. It says, if we can equip and inspire enough men to use their strength to love, serve and protect, we will turn the tide against crime, violence, abuse, corruption and social disintegration mm-hmm. and build a nation that is safe, secure and prosperous for all. It's really fantastic. And I think with all of those words said, uh, be sure to visit their website and take the pledge. No excuse for abuse. The Father and Nation initiative uh, that includes a free online course and free booklet. Let's all really educate ourselves on the various ways that we can collectively fight against gender-based violence. You only have one skin. Nourish it and wear it bravely.
Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half Project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. It's my feel good breakfast show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Oh yes, so yes, you're still keeping it locked right here in your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You know that jingle, it's again time, uh, that time of the day where we get to wish you our loyal and love viewers a very happy birthday. And guess what? You actually celebrate alongside China and McLean, who turns 22 years old. She is so phenomenal. If you don't know her, she is an actress and a singer who became known for playing Jasmine on Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Look at that face. She's also Beautiful. picked up quite a few awards on her way to stardom and she's really made, you know, a big name for herself really owning the space that she's in and in the industry. So happy birthday to you on your special day today. she be a triple threat. Yes. China McLean, happy birthday. Um, so a few more birthdays to celebrate out there in the world of our viewers. And of course, first up is Precious today. And she's sending a dedication to herself. Today is my 33rd birthday. I wish myself a happy birthday. You go, girl. And thanking God for adding another year to my life. I'll be sending you a big happy birthday as well. Then a happy birthday to Leonora Ann. I wish wish you were here so that we could celebrate you. So as you enjoy this special day, just know that I too am cheering hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> Have a memorable occasion like no other. Take care. And that's coming to you from your brother, Leonora. And then I wish my beautiful sister, the Boho, old John, who is turning 29 years old today, a happy birthday. Thank you for always being there for me, not only on the good days, but also on the rainy days. May all your wishes and desires be granted. And this is from your younger sister all the way from Soweto. Look at her picking up the phone. Oh, you remember? A cool year. <laughs> like a cup. Oh, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then a warmest wishes and love to you, Sisanda, on your birthday. And always be safe, have fun, take pictures, and enjoy every moment of this exciting time in your life. And this is from all your family. Oh, and Shahid's also celebrating today. Happy birthday, Shahid. Enjoy your special day. It's coming to you from your dad, your mom, and Fatima. Then we got a double, yeah? Creolan and Leon. Wishing Creolan Pile and Leon Moodley a very happy birthday. Blessings on blessings to you, brothers, from the Pile and Moodley families together. And then Marcin Claire, another year older, and you just keep getting stronger, wiser, and more amazing. Mm. Wishing you a happy birthday and a year that's blessed. And this is from all your loving friends on your special day. Oh, happy birthday to all of you. If you want to send through that dedication, we'd love to see a video, maybe perform, get the guitar out. 71 is where you can WhatsApp your video or you can just email a dedication to birthdays at Cordova.tv. We're uh, lucky to celebrate with a very special performance all the way from Durban this morning. And I think it's time to, to raise it up a level. <laughs> well, yes, you are in for a treat. If it is your birthday, happy birthday. But of course, this performance is certainly for everybody tuned in right now to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. We weren't going to go to Durban without stopping by uh, the House of Afrotainment to find out what's been cooking there. Tipsy has been making waves. Yes, that's right. But she's got some new music cooking. And it's time for us to get some voice showing going. Kuse, what's happening? We are coming to you live and in charge from a very special place this morning. I'm talking about the Afrotainment Studios out in Durban. We're hanging out with a very special human being, the leading lady of Rome. I'm talking about Tipsy. As you can see, she's all get up for an exclusive performance of her latest single, Amashiko. She's featuring the man on the decks, Draga. Without wasting any more time, take it away. Chesa. Chesa on his. Wash that dragon. Koshi, why you Chesa. Koshi. Just, just. Hey, 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 hey,
like a concert experience. <laughs> Thank you so much. The dancer, Thank you. shout out Anika. to her. Those moves shout were to the incredible, girl. Anika. I <laughs> wish I could dance like that as well. It has been fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting us. Draga on the decks, shout Beautiful. out to you, man. Shout out to Draga. Make sure to look out for the latest single, Amashi mm. Goshi, featuring U, Lazam Shunlosi, and Draga on the decks. Tipsy? Yeah. Thank you so much, man. You shout out Hey, Anika. Welcome back to it. Yes, your feel good breakfast show, Expresso. Ah, the spirit uh, is here. Tipsy, it is just being said you're like put that. put us into <laughs> the weekend. Uh, oh, thank you so much for that. Brand new music coming through from Tipsy there. That's going to be a crowd pleaser. It's going to be rocking the airwaves very soon. And you'll be able to say that you saw her perform it on TV live right here on your feel good breakfast show. But it's a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday, which mm -hmm. means it's time for Tuesday tunes. But of yeah. course, we always ask you to send in your rendition of the performance of a Cat. Yeah. Uh, and last week, obviously, performed an amazing song which we loved and we actually oh. got a viewer that sent in their rendition. Let's take a look it's at Sia. it. Sia. Sia. Hi everybody, my name is Sia uh, and I'm dedicating this song to someone. Actually, it defines my story. So yeah, enjoy. I'm not surprised that everything lasts. I've broken my heart so many times I stopped keeping track. Talk myself in, I talk myself out I got all worked up, then I let myself down I try so very hard not to lose it I came up with a million excuses I 
I thought I thought of the possibility. And now I know someday that it all turned up. And you make me work so can we talk it out? Yeah. And I promise you, kid, that I'll get so much more. I'll see you coming through with the vocals. I want to know what Cat actually thinks of that performance. Cat, what do you think? Very, very cool. I like how he puts his own spin to it. You know, the the mannerisms, the the eye roll. Yeah. So he will get the golden buzzer, indeed. Yeah. Well, you've got the vote of of confidence and a gold star from Cat, but we also got another one from JD. Uh, JD, let's check that out. I'm not surprised, not everything lasts. I've broken my heart so many times, I stopped keeping track. Talk myself in, I talk myself out. I get all worked up and I let myself down. I tried so very hard not to lose it. I came up with a million excuses. I thought I thought of every possibility. And I know someday it'll all turn up. JD Moon, I love that. I feel like he needed show light, he needed oh. I love this little... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when you need to fill the time, and you just got to... Oh, awesome. man, this awesome is stuff. brilliant. Uh, it would, is it safe to say that we can tell that JD uh, is definitely a, a triple threat because you can see he's got the acting mm -hmm. going and uh, he's got the vocals going. I mean, he sounds like he is on a theatre production, a musical. Yes, and that hair as well. He has that stage hair. He's, he's got, got that, presence. like, I woke up like this. So I think that is perfect. This is absolutely, Setting absolutely the beautiful. Setting the Tuesdays. Uh, the bar is so high. I mean, I don't know how anyone's going to top that, but you know what? It is a Tuesday, and Tuesdays are all about Tuesday tunes here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. So Kat is going to perform uh, something really amazing uh, from Maroon 5. Sugar. Oh. I just heard oh, you a gave little... it away. You gave but it away. I, but it's obviously not the same. But of course, he has other duties to perform, like the news headlines. Yeah. Let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> Just gone past 8 o'clock on this Tuesday morning and here's a look at the national news headlines. Judgment was yesterday reserved in the High Court in Cape Town in the case of the public prosecutor who disputes the validity of the National Assembly's rules on the removal of the head of a Chapter 9 institution. The legal team of Busisiwe Mkwebane argued that the rules were unconstitutional and invalid. Mkwebane called for further steps in the removal process to be banned. Judge Vincent Saldana apologized for technical problems that led to the case being postponed twice. In other news, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, Thabo Makoba, yesterday said in his online weekday reflections, it amounts to an act of, quote, genocide, that politicians make money out of a pandemic such as that of the coronavirus. This comes amid growing outrage in South Africa at alleged rampant corruption, especially linked to PEE tend PPE rather, tenders. Now, Makoba said the Anglican Church would join the Southern African Council of Churches anti-corruption campaign, which starts at the end of the month. On the international news front, Hong Kong University scientists yesterday reported the case of an apparent young, healthy patient being reinfected with COVID-19 four and a half months after the first infection. They said that the second bout was clearly different from the first infection rather than just re the re-emergence of an original one. Other coronaviruses, such as the common cold, do reinfect people, so the virus which causes COVID-19 could do the same. But the World Health Organization says it's important not to jump to any conclusions based on the experience of one patient. Talks in Mali aimed at resolving the political situation in the aftermath of last week's coup have ended without agreement. West African leaders have said that the disposed president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, should be reinstated. But envoys from regional body ECOWAS failed to convince Mali's military leaders that this was the way forward. And the idea that Keita could return to power may have been scuppered by the man himself, as he has been quoted as saying he, he no longer wishes to return to office. 
And now all about a much needed moment of joy for the world. Congratulations and messages of goodwill from across the world have been streaming in for Mei Jiang, the 22 year old female giant panda at the National Zoo in Washington DC, which gave birth to a cub on Friday night, the first one born there in five years. Now Mei Jiang is also the oldest giant panda ever to give birth in the United States. Steve Monfort, director of the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute, said that with the birth of this precious cub, they are thrilled to offer the world a much needed moment of pure joy, as giant pandas are an international symbol of endangered wildlife and hope. He said they knew because Mei Zhang was of an advanced maternal age, chances of her having a cub were slim. However, we wanted to give her one more opportunity to contribute to her species survival, he said. Mei Zhang is reported to be an attentive and caring mother, keeping the wee one tucked between her arms. Well, on that very heartwarming story, that's it for the news on this Tuesday morning. Let's take one last look at the headlines from the sporting world. Thanks so much, Kat. Let's start here in South Africa with football news. Monday night football saw reigning Premier Soccer League champions Mo Lady Sundowns close in on log leaders Kaiser Chiefs. That was after their 1-0 victory over Golden Arrows. Brazilians now just three points adrift of the Amakosi. And our other results coming out of yesterday's action. Another draw as Bidvest Witz shared the spoils with Maritzburg United in a 0-0 draw. And Amazulu FC and Bloom Celtic also drew two apiece. There will be just one PSL fixture this evening as Black Leopards face off against Supersport United that one kicking off at 6pm then on to cricket bad light and rain forcing an early stumps on the fourth day of the third test between England and Pakistan that was at the Rose Bowl in Southampton yesterday visitors training England by 210 runs with eight wickets in hand the day ended with Pakistan on 100 for two with Azhar Ali on 29 and Baba Azam on four but a massive milestone in the offing for England's James Anderson who now sits on 599 wickets the 38-year-old is just one shy of becoming only the fourth bowler to achieve this milestone in history. That test between England and Pakistan will continue from 12 p.m. this afternoon. Then finally, on to tennis. A 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams overcame Dutch qualifier Arantxa Rus 7-6-3-6-7-6 to advance to the Western and Southern Open round of 16. The third-seeded Williams beat her opponent in a time of 2 hours and 49 minutes on the grandstand court at the National Tennis Centre in New York. Next, she faces 13th seed Maria Sakari of Greece. That's where we leave our sport for today. Let's get to one last look at our weather and some of your beautiful sunrise pictures. Mowing the lawn. Our neighbors here are very disrespectful, by the way. They are currently mowing the lawn. So if you hear a noise in the background, do forgive us. But what is happening, you beautiful people? We are coming to you live and in charge from the Afrotainment Studios in Durban. It's time for us to have the final look at the weather. But first, a recap of your sunrise pictures this morning. Check out this blue and pink skyline sent from Yashmita Singh in Durban. Linda McMillan also posted a sunrise of Durban, where I am reporting live from. Temperatures here range from 14 to 26 degrees. It's a beautiful morning. Then Geraldine Flatwell sent us this beautiful view of the beachfront in Fishhook. I would frame that picture if I can. Fishhook can expect cloudy and chilly temperatures reaching a maximum temperature of 15 degrees. Bumele Longa sent through the sunrise picture in Peter Marisburg where temperatures kick off with 11 to a maximum of 29 degrees. Thank you all so much for your sunrise pictures. You too can contribute to our weather report by sending in your sunrise selfies on our Facebook page, Expresso uh, Show, uh, SABC Three. But now on to international weather news. Officials in Louisiana and Texas yesterday urged residents to prepare for a rare one-two punch from Tropical Storm Marco and Hurricane Laura, which are expected to pound the state this week within about 48 hours of each other. Meteorologists say it's extremely rare for the Gulf of Mexico to have a hurricane and a tropical storm at the same time. This time, uh, the last time this happened was in 1959. Laura has already caused the deaths of at least nine people in the Caribbean and is expected to become a Category 3 hurricane and whipping winds of at least 180 kilometers per hour before it makes landfall. Laura is also expected to dump torrential rain from Louisiana all the way to Florida. I hope that the people in those regions try to remain safe as they are going through these traveling times. But now let's bring it back home with today's temperatures, starting off at Poloquane at a maximum of 26 degrees. Bombella starts off the day at a low of 14, reaching a high of 32. It's also a sunny day in Pretoria at a maximum of 25 degrees. 
Josie Maboneng, your temperatures range from 7 to 23 degrees. Mahike, 11, 29. Clickstar follows suit with a maximum of 29. And Kimberley, 9.30 are your temperatures for this Tuesday morning. Bloemfontein started off the morning on a cold note, but will reach an afternoon temperature of 25. Ritters Bay, 20, 29. Peter Maritzburg, 11.29. And Durban, South Africa's playground. I'm pretty sure you saw why that is. 14.26. A partly cloudy day in at a low of 8, reaching a high of 32 degrees. East London, 10.21. Cradock, 5.30. Port Elizabeth, the friendly city, 13, reaching the high teens of 17. George, 11.21. It's a rainy day in Cape Town, uh, 52% chance of rain. Wooster, partly cloudy for you, 8.19. Sutherland starts off the morning below zero at minus five, but will reach an afternoon temperature of 19. Lastly, Uppington, 10, and your maximum is 31 degrees. That was the final look at your weather this morning, but we are coming back a little later on just to say our goodbyes. But for now, see you in a bit. Thanks so much, Akutle. Now, asthma and allergies may have more in common than you actually know. We caught up with Professor Claudia Gray to tell us more about how we can prepare for spring season, which is, of course, just around the corner. Thank you so much for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast show. Expresso here on SABC3. Time to discuss a bit of health here. Uh, what do asthma and allergies have in common? Besides making you feel terrible, mm. well, apparently quite a lot, Kusle. Uh, allergies and asthma can often occur together, and the same things that trigger your allergies, such as pollen, dust mites, and pet fur, can also cause asthma symptoms. And we chat to pediatrician and allergist, Professor Claudia Gray. Claudia Gray, good morning. Thanks so much for making the time. Thanks for inviting me on the show again. Fantastic. It's a pleasure having you on the show. We're going to start with the base basics, Professor. What is the difference between an allergy and asthma? Yeah, so first of all, broadly speaking, an allergy is, is an exaggerated response to something that actually should be harmless. So you can have a food allergy or a skin allergy or a respiratory allergy. When people say, I have an allergy, in layman's terms, it normally means they have an allergic nose or sinus, as people call it. So an allergic rhinitis. In other words, you inhale the thing that you're allergic to, like pollen or dust mite or, or cat dander, and then you get an itchy, sneezy, runny or congested nose. So an allergy is then confined to your upper airway, your nose and your sinuses. Now, when we talk about asthma, this is a hyperreactivity of your airway. So it's much lower down in your actual chest. And your airways or your bronchi in response to various things, be they exercise or cold or infection or sometimes allergies, your airway constricts, it gets smaller, it gets swollen, it gets full of mucus, and then you present with symptoms such which is a persistent cough or a wheeze or a tight chest and specifically difficulties when you're breathing out, leading to that whistling, wheezy sound. Professor, you've really broken it up so, so nicely. Thank you for that. But then what is allergic asthma and how does an allergic reaction cause asthma? So as I mentioned, asthma is a hyperreactivity of your lower airways in your chest. And there can be many things that set that off. And when we talk about allergic asthma, it's actually an allergen. So something we're breathing in, mm -hmm. that setting off, that reactivity of the chest. Mm -hmm. For example, if I was allergic to cat dander, if I go in a house where there's a cat and lots of cat fur around, I'd breathe it in, my chest would say, oh, I don't like this. It would release a whole bunch of mm -hmm. chemicals, including things like histamines or leukotrienes. It would lead to swelling, mucus production and closing of the airway. And then I would present with a cough or a wheeze or an asthma attack. So essentially, allergic asthma is a subgroup of asthmatics mm. who respond badly to allergens. Mm. Just to expand on that thought, uh, Professor, what are other common causes of allerg allergic asthma? Yeah, so we talked about house dust mite, and they come in two broad categories. The first category is the ones that are all year round, such as house dust mite and mold and, and dog and cat dander, although they tend to peak in the autumn and the winter, they are there all year round. And then other causes can be more seasonal, such as pollens, tree pollens coming out soon now, 
grass pollen. So lots of people suffer from um, asthma if there are high levels of pollen in the air. And some people can have very specific allergens. So, you know, I have quite a few patients who only react to horse stand or rabbits when they deal with rabbits or, or hamsters. So it's a wide variety, but broadly they the all year round indoor allergens or the seasonal outdoor allergens. So Professor, are all people with allergies then prone to allergic asthma if not managed correctly? It's a very good question. The answer is no, not all people. Because some people, when they breathe in allergens, they just get the allergic nose, the allergic rhinitis. Mm. And then there's a small proportion of people who only get the allergic asthma. Mm. But there's a big group of overlappers who get both allergic rhinitis and allergic asthma. Mm. And indeed, when we teach medical students and even our patients, we say that the chest starts in the nose. <laughs> so if your nose is poorly controlled, it doesn't give your chest much of a chance. And that's why we talk about the united airway that starts in the nose and ends up in your chest. And we need to control both the nose and the chest to have optimal all-round allergy control. Ah. And how best would we then manage this? Are allergies and asthma treated differently? Classically, the first step is having a correct diagnosis, identifying your allergens and trying to reduce those allergens in your environment. For example, if you're very dust mite allergic, you take some steps to reduce fluffy carpets, fluffy toys, to wash your sheets at a high temperature, for example. And then secondly, you go on to the medical or the pharmacological treatment for which for an allergic nose is classically based on antihistamines, oral antihistamines, mm -hmm. and then nose sprays, which are classically nasal corticosteroid sprays, which are very safe long-term. They need not um, give people a fright because of the word corticosteroid. And then for asthma, um, you know, it's really a thing of the past to just react to asthma when you have it and give a short acting pump. So the modern way of treating asthma is to be on a preventer of sorts most of the time. So a preventer is classically a steroid asthma pump. Um, and then that stabilizes your airways, reducing the swelling, reducing the twitchiness, as we call it. And then in addition, if you're having an asthma attack or a jolly bad day, you can also use a relief a pump which provides quick relief and opening up of the airway so in both asthma and allergic rhinitis the long-term controller is of utmost importance so taking something every day during your bad season not just willy-nilly as you need it mm. oh professor gray what a gem you are really i love the way that you've been able to distill all of this information mm. for us leaving us with food for thought and obviously just making sure that we know what to look out for thank you so so much for your time this morning. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. It's best to always get a clear diagnosis on what triggers your allergies and limit your exposure to those things, mm. as well as take the right medication to alleviate the symptoms, right? Yes, and we all deserve to enjoy life allergy-free. Allergex non-drowsy can assist you with allergy relief for the entire day. Mm. Free to be you. Live, work, play, sleep. Allergy free with Allergix non drowsy.
It's a Tuesday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We're live, large and in charge. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now, the 15th of August until the 15th of October is dedicated to bone marrow stem cell donation and leukemia awareness. Thousands of people are diagnosed with leukemia every year and many hope to make a full recovery with the help of a bone marrow stem cell transplant. Mm -hmm. And this morning, hematologist Dr. Mike Detoy joins us to share his knowledge on this health topic and of course later on we'll also be joined by Sunflower Fund CEO Alana James and of course if you have any questions that you'd like to ask please send them through to us you can WhatsApp us on uh, 066 431 5261 that's 066 431 5261 send us a WhatsApp uh, Dr. Detoy thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat to us this morning it's a pleasure. Dr. Dutoy, let's start here. What is leukemia? Uh, is, is it a form of cancer for someone who doesn't know, who is not familiar with the, with the term? Yes, it is. Um, so by definition, it's an overproduction of what we call white cells in the blood, uh, which is uncontrolled, and that, that defines it as a form of cancer. But there are many different types of leukemia, and they're all quite different. Mm -hmm. So it's just a big catch-all phrase. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's talk about white cell or the blood cells in general and their mm -hmm. function in our body. What do they do? Well, blood's the red stuff. And there are three kinds of cells in the blood. We have the red cells, which are the ones that make you, give you energy, make you run faster, jump higher. There are the white cells, which are your immune system, and they fight infections. And there are these little things called platelets, which are little fragments that stop us from bleeding. And all this has to exist in a liquid medium, which must stay liquid. We don't want it clotting up when it shouldn't. But if we spring a leak of some sort, if we get injured, we want it to clot. Mm -hmm. So the blood's got to do a lot of things um, in a very clever way. Mm. So we're back to the conversation of leukemia, can, can it be prevented? Can, can it be prevented? What are the risk factors? Well, yes and no. Um, by the time you're diagnosed with the leukemia, you've got it. Okay. So you only diagnose it once it is there. All right. But there are certain, there are certain uh, factors which can contribute to your getting leukemia. There are three main ones, and those are exposure to an excessive amount of radiation, or to benzene-type petroleum chemicals, or to certain viruses. So if you can avoid those three, um, you may reduce the, 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 the element of risk. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms that one can expect to see if you, are, uh, if you do have leukemia. Well, it's very difficult um, because if you, if you get a leukemia, mm -hmm. it affects the other cells in the blood, and that's what causes most of the problems. So. If you have a reduction in the red cells, you become pale, you're anemic, mm. which is a common symptom. If you drop the platelet count, then you start um, having little red spots on your skin, what we call petechiae, uh, and that's a common symptom as well for a variety of different causes. And then if you drop the critical white cell count in the blood, then you become very vulnerable to infections, which is also a common symptom. Mm. So all these three, anemia, pallor, being uh, very pale, yeah. um, having infections and having easy bruising yeah. are common symptoms and the, the issue uh, becomes apparent when they occur together. Mm -hmm. So that's the sign, that is a potential sign of leukemia. Individually, you're probably, you probably don't have leukemia yeah. if you have any one of those problems individually. But if they occur together, you have to have a, have a good look. So let's say now you've presented with all of those symptoms, then you have gone and been diagnosed with leukemia, then you've got to go, to, go, go on to treatment. What does that treatment look like? How, it, how is it treated? How is leukemia treated? Well, as I said, leukemia is a variety of different conditions, mm. all of which are characterized by an increase in the white cell count in the yeah. blood. And just broadly, we divide them into what we call chronic leukemias, mm -hmm. often in older people, which don't always need to be treated. You can have very high white cell counts, but they don't affect you. If they don't affect you otherwise, we can just watch those. Mm. Uh, the, the bad ones are the acute leukemias, yeah. and they tend to occur in younger people. Uh, those all need to be treated with a chemotherapy of one sort or another. Mm.
Sure. All right. So clearly a lot for us to still discover and learn about. And I'm sure that you at home also have a lot of questions. So do make sure that you stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show as hematologist Dr. Mike Detoy will be answering all of your questions on leukemia and bone marrow stem cell donation. A little bit later on, we'll have the CEO of the Sunflower Fund, Alana James, also joining us. And so just to give you that number one more time for you to WhatsApp us is zero, uh, double six. It's on your screen right now, four, three, one, five, two, six, one. WhatsApp us all of your questions and we look forward to engaging with you. So I'm chatting to Omalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping. Very good morning to you. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show as we continue our health topic this morning with hematologist Dr. Mike Dodoy, who is educating us on all things about leukemia. And of course, we welcome your questions via social media and also via our WhatsApp line, which is on your screen. So let's jump right into it. Yes. So, Doctor, the questions have been flying through on our social media. The first one's from Caitlin Bass, who says, My mom has CML, chronic myeloid uh, leukemia, and has been in remission by way of medication for a very long time. Um, um, besides taking uh, uh, Vitavio, uh, are there any new and promising treatments available? Well, the drugs like Vitavio, uh, they are known as TKI drugs, they are still the standard treatment for chronic myeloid leukemia. Mm. And essentially, you would expect the patients to remain on those drugs lifelong. Um, there are a few patients who do come off these drugs. Um, most of them will relapse, but some don't. We don't always know why they don't relapse. Mm. We would expect everyone to, but not everyone does. Mm. So, but in principle, once you're on these Vitivia type drugs, you stay on them for life. Yeah. And in terms of the second part of the question where um, it was uh, Caitlin who asked if there are any new promising treatments mm. uh, in, in the field of leukemia, as broad as it is. Uh, in leukemia general, mm -hmm. many. Yeah. Many, many, many. Mm. Um, you know, the, there's, a, there's a plethora of new options, um, but not all of them work out in practice. Yeah. These are potential options. And, you know, they always say that out of America, you get five new discoveries before breakfast, but you discard four and a half of them by lunchtime. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So they don't all work out, but there are a lot of potential treatments. Yeah. The cost of those treatments 
is another story altogether, though. Yeah, that's the challenge. And that means that they are not generally available. Sure. Okay. One can only imagine the difficulty and the challenge for you as medical professionals to be able to advise on what uh, treatment option to go for. Mm. Um, we have another comment here from uh, Angie who says, what's the procedure in donating bone marrow stem cells? Mm. I'm thinking of donating when lockdown is, uh, is over to help save a life. Well, the procedure is, very, is relatively easy. We um, collect bone marrow stem cells from the blood so just from an, an arm vein, mm -hmm. generally. Um, so that's, that's a very easy procedure. Yeah. It goes into a machine and goes back in the other arm and we just cull the cells that we actually want. Yeah, mm. so no longer the, those scary procedures I think that we once heard of where uh, they have to take out bone marrow from your, um, one of your tailbone or something mm. like that. We used to do that. Yes, yeah. no longer. To 20 years ago. <laughs> Is that how long ago? 20, over so 20 years ago, we did, I did my last one of those. Wow, um, it's, uh, it's been advancing clearly. Uh, but doctor, we actually have a caller on the line who has a question I'm sure for you. It's uh, Vanessa. Vanessa, good morning. Good morning. Uh, How are you? Very, very well. Thank you, Vanessa. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling all the way from PE. Ah, uh, Vanessa in PE. What's your question to the good doctor? Okay, I'm Vicky Calisthenia. And recently, I've diagnosed me with um, bone marrow growing on my organs, like my kidneys, my lungs, and inside of my stomach. And that is so painful at times. I want to know, is there anything else that I can do? Because the doctors just say it's normal now and pain management is my answer. Well, one needs to know what kind of leukemia uh, you've had and what kind of treatment you've had. It's, it's very difficult just to say off the top that there is something or isn't something that could help you further. Yeah. But you, you really need quite a lot more detail to be able to have a look mm -hmm. at those kind of situations. Okay, like I said, I, I, I don't have leukemia, mm -hmm. I understand. But yes, I have also other queries uh, really regarding my illness being beta thalassemia major. Oh, sorry, you're beta thalassemia. Is that the. Yes. Yes. Well, beta thalassemia is, a, is a inherited condition which makes you chronically That's anemic. Right. Um, That's right. And uh, depending on the level that you have it at, their treatment for most patients is basically supportive. Um, for a few That's children, right. they may uh, require chronic transfusions to maintain their hemoglobin at an adequate level. Um, and for a very few children, uh, it may be possible to do bone marrow transplants. So that, that, that one can do from time to time, but those patients have to be very carefully selected mm -hmm. because there are risks in a transplant. Mm. All right. Thank you very much Thanks for Vanessa. that insightful question. Beta? Th beta? Thalassemia. Thalassemia, something mm. I've never heard of before. Mm, this is the Perhaps first time I'm going to delve it. into a little bit later on as well. Um, well, we've got... Uh, lots of other questions from social media which we'll, we'll ask you on the side, Doctor, and then we'll uh, kind of give our response to that. But we thank you very much for your time and expertise. And thank you for being on the show. Pleasure. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Right, time to have a little bit of fun back in the kitchen. We all washed up and we've got an array of very nutritious, beautiful, healthy ingredients. And this is something that Chef Clem, um, you were literally glowing when you were talking about creating your own kind of milk kind of version here and we're going to be using the oat milk and we know that breakfast is a vitally important day especially if you're busy if you're training if you've entered into a new training kind of program you need the kind of energy slow burn energy that's going to sustain you throughout the day and this one looks absolutely amazing in the finished product but there are so many nutritional values that we are squeezing into this one so um, I think we can all admit that it's much easier to tackle your day when you have had that good breakfast now Chef Clem knows how to kickstart our days he's going to show us how to get the smooth bowl savvy if you will and how to make our own oat milk and he loves it get ready because this will take your breakfast game to the next level you say it's really really simple mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. and you you don't have to necessarily go for the uh, while well, you can get brilliant store-bought this is a great way to create mm -hmm. your your own and we're gonna kind of level it up with a smoothie bowl here so take us through 
the, the initial, the base of this being our oat milk. I was saying to the producer in the previous segment, like I like when things don't go as planned in the kitchen, <laughs> but then out of it comes something that's like really amazing. And what happened was it was literally a Saturday morning and I was gonna have coffee and there was no milk in the house. And that happens, right? And instead of like going to the shop, whatever, I was like, let me just actually try this oat milk thing. Let's see what the rest of the world's talking about. And I, so serious, it's easy to make and I loved it and it's what I've been doing ever since. So uh, check it out. Okay, rolled oats, the normal oats that, I mean, basically everybody has. Normal breakfast oats. Normal breakfast oats going in there. And I use about a quarter cup. You get quite a lot of milk out of a quarter cup. I'm, I normally add about a liter of, of water, water to, to a quarter cup, yeah? But here's the trick, a little bit of salt. And the salt is actually not just a trick for this drink. Whenever I cook oats in general, a little bit of salt goes salt, in. Okay. It just brings out the flavor of the oats. It's, 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 a, it's just one of those things. It's absolutely. an activator. So we're gonna go in with some water. This, it's so simple, it's so simple. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna blitz it up. So I'm using the Nutribullet now, but you could use any upright blender, any hand blender. But the, pro, the thing is, let it go. Let it just do its thing. Like let yeah, it really let it break work it. through, okay. And you're seeing already the color, right? It looks milky. So you want it to go for a minute. That way you really get the richness and the texture out of it. But I'm gonna stop it now because noise. <laughs> but it's, it's already you can see that. Already you can see. And what happens is I'm going to just let me just see what can I strain it into. I'm gonna strain it this one right now because I'm gonna use it to make my smoothie. So you strain it off, and that milk wow, that looks look like that. straight up milk. Yeah, for sure. What also blows my mind is the texture of it. It's thick, which is great. You don't want to have a especially for a smoothie, yeah. especially yeah. for a smoothie and for like this in your coffee. It's so good. So okay, That's this is what I'm actually gonna. Man. It's, it's, it, 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 I promise you. It's gonna change the way you like you have your coffees in the morning. It adds so much body to your coffee as well and to your smoothies. And I love this. You struggle with lactose. Exactly. Brilliant. So what we're gonna do now is this is the beautiful oat milk. I pop it into a jar. I've got a little beaker like this at home, which has a little cork on it. I keep mine for two weeks in the fridge. Wow, well, I okay. finish it quite quickly, yeah, but I mean, yeah. I've had it in the fridge for like two weeks, it and it's still two weeks. Wow. Okay. So what you want to do is because we are blitzing up the oat, a little bit of the the grain does pass through the sieve. So every now and then when you use it, just give it a little stir, just to like mix everything all together. But it's so easy. It's so oh, simple. Very okay. simple. Brilliant, so, man. Okay. So we're gonna build the smoothie bowl, and what I do is I actually keep some of that pulp that I strained off, and I use this to thicken the smoothie bowl. So smoothie bowls, it's not just a big Instagram thing. <laughs> They're really, really great, especially if you're trying to get your kids, or you're trying to get yourself to have more nuts, more fruits in there. It's a really great way to like decorate your breakfast in the morning, eating with your eyes, and just starting with the day off on a night. That's quick, but note. you can, you can jam pack it with nutrients, which is I think the most important thing. And I always love the idea of your body, the first thing that you kind of put into your body at the start of the day being so nutrient and rich, feed your brain, give yourself that long kind of burn, slow burn kind of energy release as well. Absolutely. And also the flavor profile is lovely. Oh, for sure, oh, for sure. Okay, okay, okay. so what's going in? So right, we're gonna have some banana, which are frozen, and that's gonna give it some, that creamy texture. You could freeze strawberries, you could freeze avo. Avo is great in smoothies as well, especially smoothie bowls, so you can freeze them. That's it's nice if, you, if you're, um, sorry to cut you off, but if your bananas are kind of, kind of reaching the end of their life cycle, but rather than throwing out two or three bananas that you haven't Bang them in the freezer so you've got them there ready for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. No more banana bread. Yeah. That was level five. <laughs> so now it's level two and we're doing smoothie bowl. All right, so the, I've got, Nicole's made some other milk for me. I'm gonna pour that in there. You wanna keep it nice and chunky. Remember, a smoothie bowl's gotta have enough texture that you can decorate the top. So you don't want it too thin. Yeah, you're not drinking it, you're eating it. You're eating yeah. it, yeah. So then we're gonna go with that the Your pulp. pulp okay. If you wanted to kind of water it out, if you made it too thick, what's really cool, you can use a bit of water in there, a bit of coconut water. Coconut water is great because it adds a tropical flavor mm. to it. You can use coconut milk. You've got some lactose-free milks as well. What I also like doing is actually adding like a bit of the, the Woolies uh, smoothies to it. So it's like an extra punch of fruit. It's really delicious. Especially like if it's if it, if you, you know, you're gonna be training later on in the day, like if we train like at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, we up really early in the morning, get that extra bit of fruit in there as well, keep us sustained. With the time we do train, we're not feeling like yeah. Oh, not pup, it gives you a little bit of a burst, too. Yeah. Ready? Cool. Good. If you wanted to make it sweet than what it is right now, because the banana adds a nice sweetness to it, you could totally add some dates to it, uh -huh. a little bit of honey, a little agave syrup, but I find that the banana is like a nice sweetness it's enough, level, yeah. especially because you're gonna top it with whatever you wanna... What the fruit's gonna give you a natural sugar anyway, yeah. Yeah, so okay, so I feel like, oh no, actually I think it might be thick enough, I think that's thick enough, yeah. we'll see, will it float? 
Check it, it out. be the buoyancy test. The buoyancy test. Okay, cool. So what I've done is I've gone with some of my favorite ingredients right now. Blueberries are really great. And they're also very, mm. like, to the eye, it's amazing because it's just this dark black berry, but the inside is, like, this vibrant that's green. Beautiful, yeah. I love yeah, the yeah. contrast. Yeah, that's the so thing the color comes from the skin. Wow, okay. Yeah. And the thing about, like, Smoothie bowls is you have to make them pretty. If it's not Instagrammable, you've kind of not done you it. You failed, yeah. Yeah. So cool. Get that on there. I love when we, I love when food trends are actually. It's not just like pretty, but it actually like has purpose and it actually does deliver. Okay. The point is, please float. Are you floating? No, you're not. No, you're uh, but it's okay. So if you want to make it thicker, just add more of that pulp to it, and or add less liquid like we did. But this is really good. I, I dig it. That's pretty yeah, cool. No, that's then we stunning. got some nuts going in there. Over the top, you gotta get it beautiful. Also, if you wanted to add a little extra flavor to it, you can add some cinnamon to the smoothie. Mm. I'm gonna go a little cinnamon on the top. This is actually nutmeg. Nutmeg, oh, it's so good. We don't use enough nutmeg. Nutmeg's really delicious. Some pumpkin seeds. Okay, we, we actually did the buoyancy test. Yeah, no, Absolutely. you passed, we winning. You passed we with winning. flying colors. There we go. And then, because you're allowed to a little bit of dark chocolate, if you want a little over the top, dark chocolate is really great. Big and chocolatey flavor. Rich in antioxidants. Um, that's beautiful. It's got all the nutrients you need to take you through your day. And it tastes absolutely delicious. And it's, of course, utilizing our, our gem of the day. It's going to be the find for our Tuesday morning. It's going to be our homemade oat milk. You can find this full recipe on expressoshow.com. Go and create yourself a beautiful smoothie bowl to see you through your active, fulfilled day. Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast show right here on SABC3. We're live and we're chatting health and continuing our conversation uh, this morning. We're still discussing bone marrow stem cell donation, the likes of leukemia as well with hematologist, of course, Dr. Mark Dutoy. And now joined by CEO of the Sunflower Fund, Elena James. Uh, of course, the Sunflower Fund was, fund, rather, was formed in the year 1999. And its main aim is to create awareness for the need of donors for those who are suffering from blood diseases such as leukemia. 
of course, welcome to the show, Ilana. Yeah. Thank you. Good to be back. So How are things going at the Sunflower Fund? Really busy. Yeah. yeah. Really, really busy. I think lockdown has um, created a whole new space for us to support patients. So, but we've been really good. Yeah. Fantastic to hear mm. because when things are busy, it means that people are coming around, people are registering, and we'll talk about that a bit later on. But let's quickly start off by understanding, uh, you know, what it is that um, the, the Sunflower Fund seeks to do? Let's start off there. So it's our main goal is really to recruit stem cell donors. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And part of that means that we need to do a lot of education and awareness, educating people around what a stem cell donor is, how to register as a stem cell donor, and also the, the huge need we have in South Africa to register more stem cell donors to save the lives of many patients out there. Okay, then let's talk about uh, bone marrow and what that is then, because now you've got my attention, you're talking about donating and someone's wanting to donate and help out there, but what exactly is bone marrow? Well, bone marrow mm. is the uh, factory in our big bones in the body that makes all the cells in the blood. And essential to the functioning of that bone marrow mm. are cells we call stem cells, which um, conceptually are immortal cells that we're born with. We have them all our life and they bud off, if you like, um, all the, the progenitors, the, the cells that will develop into all the other cells that we find in the blood. So when we harvest bone marrow from someone, that's our target, the so-called stem cells. Uh, that's what we need to create a new bone marrow in a recipient. Yeah. So when we come to understanding just how important these donations are and these transplants are, how can they save lives, these bone marrow stem cell transplants? So I think, I mean, Dr. Mike Detoy can really tell you about what the need is of a patient and what state they're in when they're in need of a transplant. But many patients who are diagnosed with the blood disease, part of their treatment regime, most of them or many of them would end up in a space where their only chance of saving their life is through a stem cell donation. Mm. And that means that there needs to be a matching donor. Mm. And we'll first obviously look to see if any of their siblings, so their brothers or sisters, are a potential match. But the chances of that happening are only about 25%. Mm. So for all the rest of the patients, we need to find what we call an unrelated donor. And that would be one of the donors that would have been registered by the Sunflower Fund as a potential donor to save the life of a patient. Oh. And we know that the Sunflower Fund does such an incredible job in that space really working around the clock always trying to find those donors and educating people bringing that awareness so if you are at home and really looking for that information looking to donate do go on to sunflower funds website at sunflowerfund.org um, so uh, who qualifies to be a donor so i always say the very first criteria is that you're willing to help a stranger in need. Mm. That for me is really the most important mm. part. We then have a few health criteria which we, our, our team will go through or when you register online you'll be able to see those. But between the ages of 18 and 55 mm. and in relatively good health, well in good health, and also that you've maintained a body weight of 50 kilograms or more. Okay. Um, and really that is our, our key sort of starting point. And yeah. then we will have some other questions that we will go through with you. And it's really quite a simple process. You can do it online or you could call our toll-free call center number and we will be able to assist you to register as a stem cell donor. Yeah. Mm. That information is of course on your screen right now. Dr. Detoy, if you could just highlight from your perspective as a professional working in the field, how important is the work that the Sunflower Fund is doing in getting people firstly educated around mm. these issues and then having them to you know, register to become donors so that when these transplants are needed, uh, you have the facilities and the resources available to do them? Well, it's absolutely essential. If you have someone who needs a, a donor for a bone marrow transplant and they haven't got a sibling or a family member who can be the donor, you have to go outside the family. Mm -hmm. So you, you need a transplant. And so you say, well, who can I have? And I say, well, pick someone from the street. You walk down, you find a nice looking young girl and you tap her on the shoulder <laughs> and you say, will you be my donor? If she's from the same ethnic group, then there's about one in a hundred thousand chance that she will match you. Oh. So to get a donor, a good supply of donors for patients in need, yeah. you need a fairly big database. And a hundred thousand is kind of the region you need to start from, ideally. 
Goodness, so, I mean, wow. the need is, is dire indeed. And so yeah. to get everyone, possibly everyone around South Africa registered is the goal that we're going for. Right? Absolutely. Wow, fantastic. We can do it then. Well, thank you very much for joining us, both of you, Lana and uh, Dr. Dutoy, and really educating us and enlightening us on this very, very important topic. And hopefully that has informed your opinion as well. Uh, now, remember, middle of August to the middle of October is dedicated to bone marrow stem cell donation and leukemia awareness. So make sure that you do your part to help save lives with the Sunflower Fund and register and donate today. Are you tired of conference calls, connectivity problems, and need to go on site or be in the boardroom? Well, Mango are soaring the skies once again. As we navigate through this new normal, businesses need to recover, and Mango cares about business. For affordable and reliable business and essential travel, visit www.flymango.com. Go discover more. Go Mango. Book now. Terms and conditions apply. It's my feel good breakfast show. It is your feel-good show indeed on this beautiful Tuesday. What a show it's been. Still keeping the feel-goodness all throughout the day. Thank you so much for choosing to wake up with us on this Tuesday. Mm, and we've got Tuesday tunes on the way in just a moment, but one last opportunity to connect with uh, Kutle, who's standing by at the Afrotainment Studios with Tipsy to round off what has been a stellar morning. Well, you asked for more tipsy Onika Draga on the decks are here to answer your call. They are here for another exclusive performance of her latest single titled Amashi Goshi. Take it away. Cheers. <laughs> Teams to come in yes. the future. People are loving you and they want to know more about you. What can we expect for the rest of 2020? Uh, all right, uh, Owak Tyler, Tips's Kitchen is opening soon. Lele Alexa Zofiwa. And also, Irozi Iper Tegatira Izolo. Happy belated, happy birthday, happy belated, Tira. <laughs> and Usanda Tropa, the album. Yeah, so guys, Kaluguzi, Nibe, Yabo. 
Yeah. Afrotainment continuing to drop heat. Well, that's it from us out here live in the charge from the Afrotainment studios. Tipsy, thank you so much for hosting us this thank morning. You, you are incredible and good luck for the rest of this year and your Thanks. career, man. Thank you. Back to you guys in studio. Thank you, Kusha. Thank you, Tipsy. What a beautiful Tuesday it's been. Yes, Tuesday Woo! Tunes over here, Woo! over there, and everywhere. Time to wrap it up this morning, of course, with hashtag <laughs> Tuesday Tunes with Kat right here in the studio. Listen, you have asked for it, and the man is here to serve it because, you know, he aims to please, right? He's all about that service delivery. Katlejo and Roderick McKay on the keys. They I'm a government here. official now? Oh, oh, well, you're, you're, you're a national <laughs> official, a national official, our national treasure. And this time around, coming through with that Maroon 5 and Sugar. But hey... Uh, listen to this. Next week, uh, we want to make sure that when, while you listen to the song, you record yourself singing your own rendition of this performance, of the song. Send it to us on our Facebook page, and who knows, we might just uh, play it on the show. But right now, Katleho is on standby to take us uh, uh, out of uh, this Tuesday morning with uh, Sugar, Marine 5. Take yeah. it away. Here we go. I know Lana James loves this song from the Sunflower Fund, so maybe she'll record her version of it. Yep, yep, 
yeah, that's what I'm talking about. On the vocals, Roderick McKay on the keys, Sugar on your Tuesday tunes here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. That is such a feel good song. And I remember that a couple of years ago, it even won that uh, Radio Disney Award for best songs that oh, really? make you smile. Oh, wow. Well, songs. I hope it made you smile at all. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure people are smiling out there, but of course, <laughs> here's, here's this reminder. We want you to make everybody else smile as well by singing and recording your very own rendition of the song and sending it to us on our Facebook page, Express Home Morning Show, SABC3, and we'll just, we might just feature it on the show. Yeah, uh, exactly. How did that make you feel, singing that? I love singing that song. Oh, it's one of my favorite smile. ones. Maroon 5 are a great band, and yeah. obviously great vocals, great arrangements all around, and it was nice to be able to yeah. take away all of the extra peripheries of all the other instruments and yeah. be able to just perform it with uh, Roderick on the keys and yeah. to do this kind of version, because I've never done yeah. an acoustic version before, and I believe yeah. Roderick neither, so ah. it was an adventure for both of us. You've broken it down. Alana James so is nicely. smiling, so we're good. You've broken it down <laughs> so, so nicely. This is beautiful. Well, JD uh, actually sent us a video. I don't know if you saw, or you did see that earlier on, of himself doing a rendition of one of your performances from, what, two weeks ago? Oh, yes. Uh, I think it was Coldplay. Uh, take a look at this again. They say Someday I know it'll all turn out And we'll work to work it out Promise you, kid, that I'll give so much more than I get Than I get, than I get, than I get Oh, you know it'll all turn out I didn't mean the song was about Coldplay I meant that he went in cold to play <laughs> that he was sitting on the couch cold and then he went and he heated it up. Beautiful, JD. <laughs> so you can do this. Well thing. done, JD. Well done. Thank you, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. We love you. Nice one, Roger. <laughs> 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 Espresso Show, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.